All oh, right. It's got the live counter. <laughs> and it's fake. We're not doing it live. No, it's not live. Once again, mm. welcome back to the Motors Podcast. Stora Army, by the way, and if the Stora Army who have uh, uh, are listening or watching this, this is the pinnacle peak of parkour content. You thought it was Stora, but it's this. This is the episode that we have wanted and tried to do for months now. And we went to his flat and we sat it's there. Been, it's actually been quite a long time. It's been so long. We recorded the one with Hendo and then Hendo hogged it and took up all the time. And yeah, now it's finally, finally happened. It forced into a a, a, a video call because of quarantine, but he's mm-hmm. he's here. So he looks like he's looking at his phone right now. So I'm going to pull him in. There he is. Callum Powell. <laughs> You're right. One you're, you're right. Just you're finishing right. off something on my phone. That's all right. No, right. No, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> right, and a Callum tip. <laughs> mm. How are you doing, my dear boy? I'm good. I'm good. That's, thanks for the intro. That made me That's feel right. speci- special and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, What have you been up to apart from sitting in your flat? Um, <clears throat> standing in my flat. Uh, <laughs> Making food in my flat, sending uh, poo videos. Oh, no, <laughs> what? Do you, mean? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> do you um, get them, Keelan? No, Who? I assume it's not just me, right? Oh, I what? can add you. I can add you to the mailing list if you want. <laughs> the poo mailing list. <laughs> no, this can't be. This can't be the, the every intro. every episode, Cal. If you know it's <laughs> <laughs> just not getting the off the desk. We're off to a fantastic start. We're every episode about, starts with poo. It we're talking about poo. me sending videos of myself pooing, and I've already ruining my setup. <laughs> to be to looks be very professional, doesn't it? It looks like, like one of you. You look like a radio host. <laughs> Hold mm. up, I'm I'm just going to slant myself so I'm blocking the window behind right. me. Has your has your spot come in useful? It sure um, definitely has. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've used it twice, <laughs> but then before that, like I'd used it uh, twice as well. Do oh, you know, really? I haven't. I've been living here like oh, just over a year. But yeah. when I when I train, I just I don't know. Like I just want to go somewhere else. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and I guess um, like having the spot there like going going to meet uh, normally when i train i go to meet other people and it's not never like oh do you want to just come, come, and, to come train at mine like <laughs> yeah, yeah. no come out you lazy bastard yeah, yeah. what do your neighbors think as well um yeah i mean i haven't i've just had some people like oh do you live here and <laughs> how did you like, get yeah this you literally literally just say, i live mm-hmm. above you yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, well, I thought well, you'd have more on, problems. Then. I think no, you'd have no, more problems now. I guess like um, everyone's at home. Yeah, uh, I guess what can mm-hmm. they say though? Really, yeah. and, like <laughs> I'm polite. I'm like, I hope I'm not bothering you or whatever. Like, and, yeah, yeah. I'm just to anyone listening, do some jumps. Yeah, to anyone listening to this, Callum basically it has like an internal area of his flat. Uh, the it's like a courtyard. Yeah, but does anyone use it? It's just walls, isn't it? Not really. Not really. No. There's there's no reason why anyone would. It's kind of just yours to play with. It's like um, not in it's not in the path of anyone really, like the, the main walls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well it's cool. we will we I feel like it's it's too obvious to talk about coronavirus and everything and it's kind of no. we've we've done a lot of it and I'm sure we, we can no touch way. on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't mind. Well, I mean it's just it's we're all doing the same thing at this stage, aren't we? But mm. let's 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 as as I, I've said in every single guest podcast, let's let's rewind back because all the way, all the way to the origins of little bowl cut Callum and Sasha, <laughs> bowl, bowl cut blading man. Yeah, Mate, it's, it's coming it's back. It's coming back blading. if I don't. It's coming back if I don't get like a go to a, visit a barber soon. Because I think we're all we're all that way, aren't we? No, you look so, you look fresh. You look like you've had. Has Sarah been doing yours? Uh, Sarah, yeah. Sarah, Sarah tried, really right? Yeah. But hmm? somewhere it's like substantially longer than the rest. But I kind of put some wax in it to try and balance it out because, oh, you. you know, video now. <laughs> um, <laughs> where? So you are you? I mean, you're you're currently living in Brighton, but you you are essentially from Peacehaven, which is just down the road. You've mm. always always lived there, right? Um, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, like we moved um, from Ox- somewhere in Oxfordshire when I was like three or four, so Ooh. pretty much only remember. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I pretty much uh, only remember Brighton living by the yeah. sea. And so when when how old parkour start how um brother, right? 
Um, no, well, <laughs> Thatcher started um, a couple of weeks before me, but there were already um, some people that were training in Peace Haven, like after the massive influx from um, Jump Britain and stuff. Yeah. Like there was loads and loads of people um, training in Peace Haven. And I was, I was kind of, I saw the documentary when it came out, Jump Britain, and um, uh, I kind of wanted to get involved and stuff. I can't remember why, why I didn't straight away. I think I was just like was into roller, rollerblading a lot. But then yeah. um, there was a bunch of us, like maybe 20 of us, like people from my year that before Jump Britain were already playing a game in the park called Wood Game, um, which was pretty <laughs> much don't touch, don't touch the floor, floor is lava kind of thing with man. Oh, rules. really? Um, and yeah, it involved like a lot of precisions and a lot of par like parkour movements and stuff. Oh, sick. Um, <clears throat> so I guess like that's <laughs> like very early background in precisions or whatever you could say. But um, yeah, 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 what the hell? Um, and then Chris Brooks and uh, a friend that pretty much no one would know. Uh, Craig were like very into it and I was like very good friends with them. And then, um, yeah, I guess I started doing it with them and Sasha was doing it with his like uh, little grunger mates. <laughs> and I kind of thought, I, I kind of thought it was like kind of dweeby that they were doing it. Um, yeah. And because it seemed like most of like the cool, like Chavia kids in my year were like, kind of taking more of an interest in it and I was like oh Sash you know like wh why are you doing this you're like not cool like grunger <laughs> or whatever uh, even though I pretty much was like a grunger skater yeah I've seen of. photos yeah. of you and, <laughs> you and your brothers are just like the like Bernie's blade baggy clothes oh yeah big yeah, time yeah, yeah. Big that's time. so interesting though so that like it actually made an impact in like your year like yeah that is um, like, yeah. yeah it was crazy to be fair like um that's strange but it lasted like a year or something. And then yeah. it got like, uh, it got whittled down to like this small group of people, which turned mm. into like uh, team agility. <laughs> yeah. I think that is the thing though. Like it's, it's really weird because I guess TV is not as prominent as it used to be, but it is, it, I feel like it takes a special type of person to watch something on TV and then be like, I'm doing that now. Like, cause you don't, don't just like watch yeah. it think nowadays and be like i'm doing that but i don't know it, it seemed like because um i don't know it, it seemed kind of similar to what we were doing already i don't remember de being there was never like a point where i was massively surprised like wow this is some like amazing new thing like mm. it was like oh cool yeah people are just doing it with their with their feet that's pretty cool <laughs> I, I swear like i swear in the playground we used to do like foot skating and stuff yeah, like, yeah. it was just like kicking walls and doing twists <laughs> like oh, really? obviously not doing like back twists or anything but yeah just, just like tick -tack you know twists. like yeah exactly just yeah uh, right. fucker what the hell <laughs> yeah so um, i mean brooks was like i don't want to say a mentor but i mean he was the older kid wasn't he like he certainly wasn't a mentor <laughs> in any sense <laughs> the worst the worst possible influence um but yeah yeah i guess he's a couple of years older than me um, um, but, but yeah, he, like, he was already, he was already like before hearing anything about parkour, he was already, as he would say, like doing big front flips off like hay bales and stuff. And oh, yeah. Really? yeah. So it seemed like well natural for like him and, uh, our friend Craig to be doing like this. Just that. And, and I guess for us as well, cause we were rollerblading and hardly anyone else was doing it. So yeah, me yeah. and Sasha got on board and yeah. Six. So, so like, uh, I don't really know when I first became aware of you. I guess it was sort of similar time to like when Phil and everyone else was slowly on the come up. I guess you were kind of all similar ages and things, but there, there just was this like growing period where you, I mean, I'd say predominantly you, obviously Sasha as well, but like the Brighton scene had become established, so to speak, like to the outside world, <laughs> i.e. people outside of Brighton. Mm. Sort of, I mean, that, that was that just, there was no, there was no uh, special intention there, was it? I mean, I guess no. you would, you would just make videos, putting them on YouTube in a, a community mm. group from that. I mean, there was, there was a big community in Brighton. There was this thing, Joe talked about it, a group called, well, a, a jam from a foreign called S Forum called um, Seafront Freestyle. Oh, and like, yeah. uh, it was like 9 a.m. every Saturday and we'd be the one like us peace haven lots would be the one that would train from 9 a.m. to uh, 
to like 7 or 8 p.m. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's mad. <clears throat> yeah, surviving that's on so, like a pint, so a pint of milk and custard creams or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. Um, of course. And um, so there was, there would, and yeah, there would be like 30 people sometimes on busy days. And, and it would what, be like, what, what year? It would be like, uh, <clears throat> 2006, 2007, kind of stopped like around 2000. That is like impressive for that number. But yeah, it, it, it oh, stayed, yeah. it stayed um, pretty consistent. And so much seafront freestyle was massive. <laughs> it's the right town, like well, right city, I guess, isn't it? Like it's the accessibility and the community vibe of Brighton. I get think makes it mm. easy for that kind of thing to happen. Mm. We must have looked like such dickheads in like such public places because it was <laughs> just the dweebiest people. Like yeah, like, yeah, we know, all... like, the Brett Curries and stuff. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout out, shout out, Brett Curry, legend. <laughs> We we all did, I think, unfortunately. But you know, um, <clears throat> yeah. Normal normal kids have their like bad fashion days where they look back and they're like, "Oh, I used to dress like that," and they'd have photos from like, you know, social fun events, and we're just the parkour mm. guys who have the baggy tracksuit. Like, Ugh. Yeah. well, I had like my baggy cargos and Lecoq Sportif shoes, but look at us <laughs> now. <laughs> like, I've got your own shoes. Got so. Motus's baggy cargos, and I've got. Um, Star of tens with a Le Lecoq Sportif logo on the fucking bottom. It's oh, yeah. full circle. <laughs> that is hilarious. Oh, yeah. We won't talk about that. We won't. We can't. I don't We've, even actually know what that is in reference to. So now I'm curious. Oh, <laughs> oh, I know. Shit. oh yeah, yeah. This is finished. All right. Yeah. All right yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, so, so Brian was kicking off and. Oh, I mean, there's so much to talk about. There's there's so many different little avenues, but you were already churning out some gold that has is still gold, in my opinion. Like mm. the, the summer videos and stuff like that are some of the best parkour videos ever made. <laughs> there's so many people who, like don't check those things out, and they're so what? on. Is this on like what like Stora's channel as well? No, no like Callum. Yeah. Little, oh little, right, yeah. yeah. Callum PK. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the ones where it's like Sasha leveled up and the little video game moments. Mm. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, I mean you, he, he filmed it all, but I, I edited them. All, yeah, all yeah. Them. That's why and they then, have like so much of like quirky, weird shit in it. Like, and all the kind of prog rock music and yeah, Dragon, know, Dragon Quest memes did, inside yeah. jokes. Did you that, share the same computer? And then one, I feel like I heard something that you were both editing and then suddenly Sasha just started like... Yeah, yeah, editing yeah. More. yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And okay. I think Sasha... Yeah. Uh, um, had a lot of knee injuries like close to the beginning. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and sense. he would uh, film a lot more mm. back then than I would. So he got really good at filming, really good at editing. Yeah. 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 Mm. And yeah. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but you two were this like little kind of collaborative team because you were just constantly churning out stuff. Mm. But I don't, I don't know the exact like, timeline of kind of when things like summer video and stuff like that were popping off and then like when blitz dem i mean blitz dem five yeah. honestly probably one of my favorite parkour videos i've made like mm. top five top ten kind of thing just for like for me it's like a nostalgia thing i think even though mm. i wasn't in those circles at that time there's something about that video i just fucking adore but yeah, was there yeah. a blitz dem four three two and one there was mm. one and two right there was one and two, yeah, but the, the intro, of, the intro of Blitz Dem Five is like the whole the the Family Guy thing, uh, where Lois is like, "Peter, we've been over this. There can't be a World War." Uh, oh shit! What was she it? says like, "There can't, can't be a World War Five without uh, three and four. And he goes like, "I but have that's spoken." Boy, it's so epic or something. Like it skips right yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck. He's like, but, but. He goes, I butchered that so badly. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> that is funny. But I but, guess um, um, we got introduced because. Brighton was pretty isolated, even though it was like quite a big thriving scene. Um, yeah. And then it was when Teg, um, Teghead yeah. and Callum Linkstracken came to Brighton and made some videos. And like that was um, our first taste of how people train outside of, uh, outside of Brighton, I guess. Oh, and I guess they came and trained with us and Rupert and stuff because yeah. they saw, I don't know, like I think a lot of... Um, us guys were more on the forums and stuff at the time than like 
uh, some of the other Brett Curries and stuff. So like we had an idea of like good tech and everything and they came and trained with us and yeah, yeah. got us, uh, Tag from that invited us to like, um, we heard about the New Year's Eve Eve jam from that and then we met everyone and then, yeah. Oh, so that was kind of your introduction to like the- <clears throat> Yeah, like to the, the circle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the thing. I think like you guys had like established yourself and then then especially kind of yourself and Sasha and a few of the others became pretty prominent in London. Like you were in London a lot for a good period of time. Like you, were yeah. kind of, you felt like a London regular in a way. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's weird. We obviously met kind of, I guess, early on sometime around then and mm. i mean my my big thing was like i mean so yeah i can't think when blitzdem was but like for me it was like 2009 ish 2009 yeah when we did uh brighton parkour because i i we kind of set up visive and i was mm. like oh i want to make parkour videos and i'd made a few in london mm. that was met- like uh we were shooting well we finished shooting that around like october november 2010 I'm yeah sure. yeah because it was freezing and i made you all go in the sea mm, yes that's <laughs> exactly why i remember the game. <laughs> because but yeah and I, winter I, yeah i was like oh i want to like i'd seen you guys and i was like i want to make a video with those guys and brighton was obviously fairly easy to access <clears> and i remember the first <throat> time i came down and i got quite close to sasha and like we shared the kind of video thing and we went out for a day and i was like i fucking had like my big old tripod and was like following you guys around filming stuff and i had this vibe i was like i feel like callum doesn't want me here and i went back <laughs> I, I filmed some bits and i put them into like a i put them into a little draft with like a little bit of the song and i sent it to sasha and i think i called it like restoring callum's faith yes <laughs> i do remember I it to sasha and he loved it and then I, I think he showed you and he was like yeah cool let's film more yeah, I, was, I think I was kind of like, why are we put, why are we like um, why are we putting so much energy into like, uh, yeah, yeah, like doing all this stuff for like someone else's video, and we yeah. didn't like know you too well at the time, like we just no, no, you, I think I just forced like, myself in a little bit, like, mm. like did uh, you made you made the community spirit video and um, and the manhunt video, didn't you? The manhunt video oh, no, that yeah. would be a bit later. No, no, I think they maybe came first. What was the manhunt video? I know the the other one, but it was called something dumb. We basically spent an entire day running around London playing manhunt. Mm. We did that. We did that, that sounds fair bit. so good. We yeah, it was really. Bit. We used fun. to do it. We used to what? do it at uh, IMAX. We used to do it at Vauxhall Elephant, Elephant Castle, Castle as well. Yeah. yeah, I watched yeah. that video kind of recently. But yeah, started. like while while we were playing at IMAX one time, Kai, I think Kai cycled down from Cambridge on his like. Oh, he had a bike that was like Jesus 1,500 Christ. pounds or something. Yeah. Like a really expensive bike. Locked up with like a motorbike lock. And while we were playing in the area in midday, like I don't know, afternoon, chopped. yeah, someone chopped in. The, there was just like a broken lock on the floor. So wow. Wow. That's, so That's happened a few times at IMAX. Like people have locked mm. up bikes and they've gone while you're literally standing next to them and no one's mm. noticed. I'm going to grab some water quick because my throat my voice is already seeming to be pretty shit. I think it was because I was singing like, you know, the double rainbow song this morning. The double <laughs> rainbow song? <laughs> What's and, a double and, rainbow song? You know, you know like the auto-tuned, um, yeah, yeah. auto-tuned viral meme videos and like the, the, the one as well where he's like eating a burger in his car. It's like, damn, damn, <laughs> damn. Yeah, I was, you were I was singing those. enjoying okay. those this morning. Go so, and get some water. Let me get some water. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Do you not know the double rainbow video? Keith? No, I don't know the double oh, rainbow. Like, um, he sees like a double rainbow and he's like, it's so beautiful all the way across the sky. Double rainbow. I might, I might have, but I don't People remember. like auto-tuned it. There was a period where any viral video got auto-tuned. Oh, really? Oh, I think even God. like the, uh, like, hide your kids, hide your wife one was initially just like a, it was like a news interview. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, There's somebody raping people out here. Hide your kids, hide your wife. And these two guys like would have <clears> all these like samples of it. Yeah, I Sorry, didn't know that. Like, stop, stop, stop chatting shit. He's back. <laughs> that is the biggest mug in the world. What the? F- they got. Callum's got a fucking this German. Is Jesus Christ! Oh, no, a a liter. <laughs> Jesus. It's a liter Stein from. Uh, Stein we nicked it. Word. Nicked it from a like. Uh, what are they called? Beer garden in Munich or something. Yeah. Callum Powell doesn't steal things. I mean, um, bought it. <clears throat> bought it. Yes, there we go. Um, but yeah, so I think I think looking back in the the annals of parkour history, you 
are and always have been a very prominent face sort of since the early days of like video content and just being about and training there's there's so many videos whether it be kind of yeah like stuff we've made or scott's videos or your own stuff like you've always been about and you've you've kind of it's never really felt like you've ever really faded away it's sick <laughs> <laughs> no but i think it's like you get people who have dipped in and out i mean like we spoke to phil recently obviously and he was kind of there was a period where it felt like oh where's phil and now it's mm. really kind of about um yeah it's kind of sad in a way like phil mm. has dipped dipped in and out and actually lived and done things with his life <laughs> got jobs like had experience yeah like, yeah not just experience of substances of course i'm not just referring to like party <laughs> stuff like but yeah experience like it's not only experience in parkour but yeah. whereas i've yeah just done parkour yeah wasted well, think, youth big time <laughs> I, I would i would disagree with that would, the opposite yeah yeah, yeah. I, I i say it as a joke like, yeah yeah, yeah. But, um but i so something i kind of wanted to touch on which to be honest we could slot in anywhere but it i don't i don't know if this is like just kind of genetics in the early days but it's always felt like you are strong and have had a focus on being i mean your style of movement has always lent towards like classic parkour movements like you're you're not a flip orientated person mm. but it's always felt like you've always had a, a, a solid focus on kind of technique precision power strength and whilst not only just training that and also like repeating that because you're not the type of guy to like just one bang something and let it go sloppy mm. you've definitely maintained i mean i can remember old not workout videos but like there's old videos of you lifting and trying to do sort of physical things from years <laughs> ago like has that always been a focus i mean evidently um, i think in terms of like the classic parkour stuff yeah i've i guess i've been um kind of geared more towards that from the people that i trained with as well yeah but, um um i guess with the the lack of like more acrobatic stuff that's never been like by design it's it's not like i i dislike it when people are like no i only want to do like efficient stuff bro it's like <laughs> i i very i do not train for efficient stuff i don't think i ever have i like a very fast like speedy run when you're covering a lot of distance um i would say yeah i mean you train challenges yeah i definitely train challenges there's yeah. been times where i've like done like a lot more like um like longer runs and stuff like more yeah any kind of things like around um like te when Tag was making the rage frubling uh jangarary videos and everything i was super into that um but never like with the idea of like becoming more useful or whatever um but i yeah i didn't get into the acrobatic side of things um definitely not by design it was because i was never good at it yeah um and like with the more jumping stuff, I kind of was good at it. So I kind of neglected and stayed away from uh, the things I didn't do so well in, which is, yeah, a pitfall that many people fall into. But I guess it's helped me to specialize and yeah, there's, there's positive and get better at a niche. And also, probably a lot of the time you could have been working on your acrobatics, you were making like funny trampoline videos. So mm. <laughs> out, out, out of you not learning things like back fools, we got comedy. So I guess it kind of, Oh my God. It, it so worked. Wasted you. <laughs> 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 that, that five minute video where I'm bouncing around, you could, could be diverted, diverted that energy just to, just to try and work out a back fall. And just exactly. Like, exactly. But um, but in terms of like lifting and stuff like this, which obviously nowadays you're you're very kind of on top of mm. you for now. That, for now, yeah. For now, has that has that been something that you're you've kind of always had an interest in, and like where did that come from? Well, yeah, um, I guess that was another thing from Tag. Uh, Tag and Bobby were the fir were the first people I saw. Yeah doing any lifting for parkour like i saw them uh in a video called quaker versus satan on <laughs> on tag heads channel where they're doing bulgarian split squats in bobby's garden yeah and uh, i think i just asked both of them like why they're doing that and said like yeah it'll make you make you stronger it'll make you stronger for better jumps and 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 make your knees like uh good against any injuries or anything yeah. and without questioning it i just got my mom to buy me some argus weights 
um, God. and I, I started doing it mainly mainly as well like not, I don't I don't think I even particularly wanted my jump to be like that bigger I think it's because um a lot of my friends at the time um were dropping like flies with like knee problems and stuff yeah uh, like Craig being one of them one of the people that I started with and who was like such a prominent um person training like in the Brighton scene like he was by far the best like yeah. and and if he kept training and didn't get like uh he, he got like quandra malaysia patella which was like like his cartilage in his knees both knees were just like in bits um oh, oh my god so but yeah he'd be amazing right now i'll, I'll send you a link to like an old 2007 video later but um oh, yeah seeing stuff of his. He, he was one of the he was one of the first to do um the big level arm jump at jubilee gardens oh and, really um, he, he the, did the the cat pass precision at IMAX when the walls were still orange and fucking hell and um the cat pass arm jump at IMAX too when they were still orange yeah. so yeah like he was really wow. good but no one, no one knew who he was really around that time yeah wow um, but yeah so he and a few other people had like knee problems and uh I wanted to keep doing parkour for as long as possible so I yeah. jumped on anything that I thought would uh, even though it's probably more to genetics than than anything i was going to ask actually i mean you've you've obviously had some kind of wrist injuries recently which you've had like niggling things that you you fractured it right and then it kind of wouldn't go away for a while and for that but, um yeah yeah still problems with it yeah but you have you ever had like bad knees um yeah recently actually um they... now and again i'll get not um patella tendonitis but quadricep tendonitis so the one like above the kneecap um oh, i've been God. struggling that until very recently since uh like early december or something yeah but that's been like kind of on and off over the years but it was definitely the longest um uh longest time recently but yeah now seems to be all good because i i sort of i was what i was trying to do is just think about like it was kind of what made me think like you've never really faded away. And although you've obviously had injuries and bails in the past, mm. like that, it doesn't really feel like there's ever been a period where I've been around you and you've been like seriously affected by something. Like quite often you'll, you might have a niggle, but then you're one of those people who you'll be doing something actively to try and counter that, which is obviously yeah. Yeah, yeah. a lot of people don't do that. Yeah. Um, I guess just parkour is quite important to me, I suppose. I ain't yeah, got much else. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Honestly. Yeah. This is the other thing is like, at what stage did you kind of realize that you were, because you are undoubtedly one of those people who is just like 100% parkour. Like, I mean, you obviously, you drum and you do have a social life and this mm. other things, but you for the last well over a decade have just been 100% balls to mm. the wall, like train. I remember we went climbing for Kai's birthday a few years ago and you were annoyed because it was sunny and you were like, we should be outside <laughs> training. <laughs> like, you're like i don't agree with going inside <laughs> <laughs> like i love that mentality because you're just like i like parkour is everything i should be doing yeah yeah it's funny yeah. how how my life hinges on this one thing that like doesn't pay that well and um and is so reliant on your joints being healthy and stuff yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny isn't it and <laughs> and especially especially where my style as well is even more heavily reliant on your joints being yeah. healthy, yeah. <laughs> able to perform at their top level. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> scary. When, yeah, it's very scary. <laughs> when did you? Uh, I, I, has that just been a slow build, kind of throughout your life of just like I'm giving everything to this, or can, was there ever a moment where you? <clears throat> no, not really. No. Um, yeah it, it's like it was switched on and then yeah it stayed on and there's never been yeah. never been too much uh points like eve and i've been through some some shit like financial speaking but it's yeah. never really been like an option to um parkour has still never been like it's never not been top priority i suppose yeah like, i mean to touch mm. on that like you kind of You've never, yeah, you've never like. I mean, there was a period where you you took up a job in Tesco's and things like mm. near your house, but you you were never kind of like, oh, I'm approaching or I'm in my early twenties. Like, let's 
sort of oh, i should probably start to call this a day like the, i'm, I'm mm. not early enough you were just like cool i'm just gonna make it work and yeah yeah because it was i guess mm. it because it was so fun like it never dipped the motivation never dipped because uh i was enjoying it so much and not only that it was uh I didn't have any friends that didn't do it <laughs> yeah like um and so the social aspect as well was like massive like yeah in yeah terms of, it's it's my life socially it's my life uh online it's my life outside everywhere yeah mm. yeah so do you um, feel yeah, like that's how it's always been top priority yeah from from my perspective sort of on the outside it it i can see that i kind of for the typical person you approach your late teens early 20s and kind of the realities of life can sometimes kick in in terms of financial requirements <laughs> things like this which obviously it did for you at the same time you kind of had stora which is like the best support network yeah around that time i guess what i want one from to say is i guess you can kind of say like okay i'm gonna like take this job at tesco's to subside some kind of income but Mm. I can see that there is a potential here with Stora and like if I just keep it's the same thing we tell us. Yeah. I, mean, I had the that's... same conversation with Sarah. You just just mm. a little bit longer and it will start to pick up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well that's that's the thing. That's that um we were getting like quite a few jobs around uh 2014. Yeah. Um like uh we had like H and M and stuff, like quite well well paid things and they were coming more and more often. So then I quit Tesco and then we did Chaps USA. Yeah. Um, yeah and uh yeah then the jobs kind of stopped for a bit <laughs> and it was like ah, i've made a mistake i can't remember who but I like did. um then it was just like sticking it sticking it out and yeah. then sasha was super broke for a bit before like um star yeah. could pay us like uh like a cut of the clothing sales and stuff yeah yeah and i think i mean well i want to rewind a little bit in a second but i i think yeah, uh, we all I think a lot of us who were kind of let's say in the industry and earning off of it i.e from jobs like commercial jobs around that time we all had that like weird thing where there was a lot of that commercial work i.e wear a suit and jump over some buildings or whatever for this mm -hmm. and then that slowly once parkour like lost the it wasn't new anymore so what like nowadays you don't really get that work as often um it's like a strange <laughs> just healing water is god all right. <laughs> it, oh my god! Not watching Sorry. the video, Callum is drinking from a mug the size of his head. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Charles. I... That's all right. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, so, 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 Stora, right? Why the fuck are you in a little den? <laughs> Gaming den. <laughs> Why? I I don't know. You tell me. There's me. With, there's me with my window open, trying to get as much light as possible. Like yeah. you're, you're no, I, literally it's called trying. soundproofing. Oh, I don't know. Oh, what? Yeah, you live in the yeah. countryside. Thin thin bits of fabric. My my dad is doing work to the house right now, and trust me, oh, if, I didn't, okay. if I didn't put a thin layer of curtain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Once again, yeah. to anyone not watching this, Keelan is surrounded by a a, a veil. Mm. Mm. Um, for cozy yeah no it does look nice uh, uh, uh what was i gonna say yes yeah, so, so, <laughs> i mean the way uh, i hope you know like um i'm just gonna try and cut you off through this whole thing just just fun. for keelan <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> you know callum whenever callum this is podcast <laughs> yeah he sends it to me as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's amazing thing. it's so hard to get from you jars <laughs> that's fine um i mean is there any point in me starting to speak or, or... no no go for it seriously I'll, I'll just drop it drop it in at random yeah. point okay oh. i mean keelan you've got the list of notes as well you can ask some of these questions oh i know don't worry uh, I i'm just trying not to get cut off that's all <laughs> <laughs> i'm kidding so 2009 we obviously start doing well so yeah as, as we were saying 2009 2010 I'm spending some time with you guys and we're kind of filming and, and stuff like that. And the London scene is developing and the the Guildford scene is developing and the Horsham scene is developing. And before Stora even existed, I remember we'd made Brighton Parkour. We were making it, I think. And I was like talking to like Toby or maybe the cave or something. There was this idea to do <laughs> oh, yeah. a video that I, I kept calling. I don't, I don't know if um, I came up with it. That Horsham lot and that Toby kid. 
Yeah, that Horsham lot on that Toby kid. And, and it was and, uh, and you made it into an acronym. I like abbreviated it's like Flatuck. Yeah, <laughs> it's got, got a ring to it. Big yeah, ring yeah, to it. Really got a ring to it. <laughs> and I was like so excited to make this video because I was like, cool, Brighton Park all is done. Like we got all these up and coming guys. Like I'll shoot this, and then slowly or not as slowly suddenly kind of well i guess the story channel got started which initially mm. was just the kind of caves and then that thing started to like take off and for obviously a number of years it was kind of just fucking around and it was like that lot doing that thing and then it slowly became more established in like kind of the most beautifully organic way because nowadays you get the kids who start a youtube channel and they want to be Stora and therefore they kind of copy the rule book so to speak but there was no rule book for you guys it was just like this yeah process and you can't yeah yeah you can't you can't replicate it and the next kind of big names or whatever like they they, they have to almost carve their own path i don't think mm. you can just copy and paste that kind of thing i think it's quite funny at the at, um if you watch uh jimmy the giant's latest video how he talks about playing the game and everything um mm. Like mm. by doing the clickbait titles and like making these longer form videos and trying to get the attention of uh, to sell park or like to the yeah, public. Yeah. Um, and it's funny, like we were in in the time where it was still quite strong on YouTube. And we, yeah, like you said, we didn't have to play by any rules. We just uploaded like, like if you watch episode two, like cow eye, it's just like a, yeah. a 20 second video. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just all bullshit. But like, I don't know. Yeah, people loved it because it just wasn't. Um, it wasn't just like a three, a three minute sampler of like, no, a single person or a team. It was like, mm. like, Star Blog was Horsham Movement was that, and Callum yeah. PK was that, and Toby Seagar's channel was that. But Star was like, we would just put all the bullshit. It in was from bullshit, yeah. yeah. And that's what it started off as. It was it was um, interesting actually because it never really felt like because obviously as you said it there was a period where like a beautiful video that might include all of the story guys might appear on Sasha's channel or mm. Toby's channel, and it kind of felt natural because you knew Toby is like the creative or Sasha is creative mm. or whatever. But then once it started to establish itself on the story channel and you started to get these like higher grade edits, it didn't feel unnatural because somehow i think it yeah you just you kind of got the perfect combination of the fuckery and the beauty and obviously back mm. then there was a lot of beauty because it was very depth of field yeah DDs and, and all of that yeah. um, and i mean i guess what kind of kieran jimmy was was sort of saying and it's it's a very different landscape nowadays is that that's how you grow fast, I reckon. Like nowadays on the YouTube landscape, if you want to grow fast, you've got to play by those rules. But mm. I mean, Star, you're approaching a kind of 10 year anniversary. That's by no means an overnight success or, or growth. But I think yeah. you've grown in the best possible way because the people you have brought on board as followers and supporters are, they're there for the long run. Like they're not an overnight i mean you maybe in the more recent years with the kind of some of the virals and things you obviously pick up people who come and go but mm. you have established that solid 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 following which i don't think you can like you can rush but to touch on the, i mean this this there's too much with stora like there's mm. this you've traveled to too many places you've had too many fucking crazy things getting shot at again mm. I, I, insane it's like it, it's ridiculous like the stuff that you have got up to mm. when when did you start to like take it seriously because until you guys existed there was no proof that it would work like obviously there was kind of storm had were probably a little bit ahead of you guys in terms of mm. like commercial success with jobs and things but your life of just like, we'll go here with no money and we'll make this amazing video and put it on YouTube. Like none of you were earning off of that. When were yeah. you like, yeah. I guess that that wasn't the intention, I guess. No. Like, making those videos, um, especially like the early things wasn't like, yeah, wasn't the intention to make any bank from it. Like they're, they're not like particularly videos that um, like the chaps on tour things that uh would it wasn't like showcasing the best kind of parkour although off the back of it like sasha and toby both um got featured 
on oh, uh Channel 4 thing right yeah yeah uh yeah. Fuck, random max Matt, random max with right, um, yeah. mike, mike christie got one yeah there, the um, but I, I don't jump, jump Britain, jump Britain. Yeah, I don't mean necessarily so much as like initial financial gain, mm. uh, but more in terms of, I mean, kind of. I remember Drew. I think he started uni and then dropped out pretty quick, right? Uh, uh, yeah, Drew and Sasha. Um, yeah, both. and I think and Toby, was, Toby as well. Like that both. was like early days. Like you mm. weren't. That wasn't like oh, we've got so much work and money coming in. That was just like no we want to do this and was that just like yeah, i think i think it well i i don't think it even even was so much um no let's just go down this route and pursue this for um because it might down the road be more like uh financially stable or whatever um, yeah it was just i think they just wanted to put their time into something that felt more meaningful maybe maybe not yeah. even meaningful just like just fun, Enjoyment. like yeah 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 uh, head, hedonistic kind of thing and then like down the road like if it doesn't work if it doesn't like or if it slows down like a year later or something then maybe they would i don't know i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure on their perspective no but at but, the end of the day i mean that sounds in some ways it's the most sensible thing to do because it's like mm -hmm. you only get that opportunity to have that much fun once in a way and it's yeah. like you can see that you're already on a bit of a wave as mm. you said, they could go back to uni a year later. I mean, like Phil yeah. gone back to uni, like yeah, yeah, to uni. Oh, you don't want to be one of those people though, like one of the mature <laughs> students. <laughs> no, no. I, I, I mean, mean I'm, I mean, I have, I haven't written off the idea of like going back to going back to uni or something at some point, studying yeah, like yeah. sports science or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I'm I, not, I, I wouldn't completely write it off, write it off, but I wouldn't want to do it. But like, no, no, yeah. Um, I guess, I guess, around 2012, like around the time where they sacked off uni, they were um like that's when we made the first t-shirt and everything as well like yeah the st yeah mm. yeah yeah but, yeah so, so there was like some entrepreneurial like level but oh, at the same time like loads of people have been telling us to make shirts since like like Stop. the very early days of stuff yeah. i guess drew had always i mean he he i remember hearing a story that he used to like make backpacks no he bought backpacks and like sold them at school or something right really yeah somebody told yeah. me that maybe toby um but i think he's always i mean he's he's definitely sort of i've always viewed him as the kind of on like the driving business force of mm, yeah stuff, yeah yeah, yeah he took business at college i'm pretty yeah, sure yeah um, um but so where are my notes yeah so so star grew youtube grew but not to the, even close to the levels that it was at but like i think within our community you guys had become this like force of chaos and fun and it was a completely different vibe to storm who were the other kind of big prominent youtube ones because they were so flashy whereas you guys were so kind of weird <laughs> yeah. um, and you definitely established your style and i guess it, i guess it was just like a slow growth because you started mm. to kind of get the commercial projects you put money into things like traps on tour usa which gave opportunities but it didn't nothing changed overnight did it no um and i mean when did the clothing become like a large factor in in like i don't know what i mean in just like the mentality there or did it because you obviously started with one shirt but i remember sort of a period where there was stock lining the corridors of max and benji's house and yeah, yeah. it had like, quite quickly turned into like a proper thing hmm. like, um, I, I guess i guess um yeah it accelerated from um from 2012 2013 yeah thing. yeah yeah um and then uh, there's just too much to touch on but like Roof culture was obviously to that. Was it 2015 we went to Asia? Um, 2016. Yeah, it's 2016. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was gonna say it doesn't feel like 2015, mm. but it, it 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 was growing well, like really, really. Like by the time we went to Asia, it felt like Stora was well and truly established. And I think had you guys started like earning off of the business by then? Uh, after roof culture Asia? No, like pre roof culture um we were we were definitely able to fund like trips and stuff yeah like of, of course like uh chaps usa and like tunisia and and all these things were all um they were paid like like the flights and everything were paid 
from yeah, start. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, at that time, we were still very reluctant to like staying anywhere, like paying for um, Airbnbs or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, that hence the super tramping thing. Like, yes, yeah. Fuck, um, I didn't like. I mean, that was obviously the first big documentary. I guess I think Roof Culture Asia was like maybe like the first thing because we we I remember the conversations actually this is so funny like we were saying like uh we were talking about maybe just sleeping on roofs and sleeping yeah, rough yeah, like yeah. that and we were like mm-hmm. yeah yeah I mean I'd be up for it if it was like and, and we just came to the conclusion that like if we're going to be doing our best stuff in the day like um it's not just like super tramps thailand where we're just like roaming around and it's not so much hinging on being able to do like our top mental and physical stuff like with the consequence of death like we we decided like (laughs) yeah it's probably best to be well rested and um and had uh, a great leave on the roof and fell off the next day but then in hong kong we had two weeks of sleeping in pretty much might as well have been sleeping on a roof because it was funny, I actually, yeah. it was horrible but i don't remember it being that bad like i think you've told me you i was i was, was spoon, I was I've, i was spooning max and i, I had an air, i had an air conditioning thing dripping on my head all night and i, I didn't want i didn't want to be i didn't want to like top and tail with max because i didn't want his feet in my face uh, I so i chose the drip <laughs> i'd sleep next to josh under yeah, the I air feel, unit, which i feel you with that it, yeah and I, I had a cockroach on my neck the first night, but it was just oh, really? like I saw yeah. cockroaches. But I uh, first night I woke I'm up, like... it was only like that, and I was like, "Oh, fuck. It, oh it was, my god!" It wasn't like it was a bed, like it was a say, it was like a room, if you know what yeah. I mean. So whose mm. bed broke the first day? Very true. Very true. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> on the mattress. <laughs> but yeah, so like, I mean, obviously you guys did super tramps. That was massive. That was kind of the the first like it, i don't think it, technically it was the first first paid film in parkour because there was that people in motion thing but it was the first like proper paid thing i don't remember them getting the fucking blowback like loads of stick from the community about like oh, um, why, are you, why are you making us pay for a, a uh, i think parkour video it should be free it's so, just like, it's it's when, when we you're because you're the trailblazers <laughs> Like if you're at the if you're the ones who make the most noise, then of course it's going to happen to you. But um, yeah, and we did hype it like so much, and then like with the trailers and everything. And I feel like, like you didn't give much. Yeah. <laughs> you have to pay for it. And yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> just to clarify, yeah. anyone, we yeah, you do have to pay for Soul Destroyer. So there you go. Just if you haven't yeah. already sussed Thank that you. out, yeah, you, you've, <laughs> you've you've made it like clear enough. Yeah, I hope so. Um, but so so was it? the first pov or roof culture asia that came first um the the first viral pov was um came after roof culture asia it came after yeah okay so that was the only thing i wasn't unsure uh, sure of but so i swear that wasn't the first viral though there was another viral that was in england and it was another pov and it um, was just, i think it was just three of you but i can't remember where it was that is the first one that's the one i'm talking about yeah yeah with the one that's like, not in eight yards yeah, 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 yeah. Right, yeah. So yeah, the, yeah. the reason being is like, I mean, it is undeniable to say that Stora had not already obtained a level of success within the community by Roof Culture Asia. But there's one thing saying success within, within the community and some commercial work to actually then I would say being successful to kind of the wider world. Um, which is kind of why I've rushed ahead to like these points because it felt like we obviously went to Asia, um, still being so ridiculous that I got to be involved in that trip, uh, even though I shit myself a number of times. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, if you'd have told us like we'd, you had like mad anxiety and everything and, and, and were completely allergic to police and security guards, then maybe it would have been different. <laughs> but... Well, it was like, yeah. It was, but, it was you like, know, we, we, we got on with it. <laughs> If you take the country boy who's barely done any like serious roof missions, well, I've done roof mm. missions, but not like police encounters to Asia mm. for that. But um, but no, you 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 like I think that was like a interesting perspective to have in the video and everything as well. Like yeah yeah yeah, it was it was jumping in at the deep end with sharks and everything else in yeah. there as well. It's- and your your interviews like were were so good in that film as well like they they had to be there to be because i'm the waffle master but um 
it was it was obviously roof culture when we were out there the first viral happened of max which set the whole thing kind of crazy and that was like that was crazy for you guys there was a massive amount of kind of interest um and then the film we i mean it felt like at that time like even just while we were shooting it and when we came back that it was just like everyone's eyes had already been on stora but even it just peaked like all oh, the whole community it was just like you guys are the ones doing something whereas a lot of other people are either kind of stagnating or not doing anything nearly as progressive the film obviously took us sort of a year or so to actually come out due to loads of different reasons but during that time was then when this first pov came about which went like kind of mega viral in a mm -hmm. way and i remember in asia actually you guys were kind of saying how you'd finally finally kind of got consistent with your weekly videos you mm. for so long you've been trying you fight and you would you churn them out every week in asia which was amazing but it was it yeah. was kind of i know it's been that long. yeah yeah but from the point of you dropping that pov that felt like where everything kind of really started to pick up pace and you Absolutely. had yeah, some yeah. virals different styles you started playing the youtube game more and, and things like really went from there I guess kind of what I'm building to was like, was there a like a, a, a cohesive thought process behind like, okay, we've we've got some momentum, let's make this thing grow, or were you still just doing it like the old way, where you just kind of just had fun? There was definitely um, a level of um, wanting to like use that momentum and everything. Yeah, um, so we definitely rode it quite a bit. But I think there was definitely like we didn't change up our idea towards our content too much, I guess. But there was definitely like the, I guess, I'm not sure if it was more to the um, to that or to like the YouTube algorithm. Yeah. Um, to how we changed like the format a little bit to be like a lot more vloggy and stuff. But, yeah. I mean, yeah. we we were already like. I mean, in Roof Culture Asia, like we weren't too used to vlogging, like in general. But like, um, but I guess we got better at it, like around it, that time. Because yeah, we kind of had to. Um, it definitely felt like it became natural because I remember before that you guys had tried very briefly a period where, I think like the one I remember is Toby went to China to do like a world record thing, and you you tried to do a bout of like vlogs, like almost kind of personal vlogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it never really felt like that kind of sat that naturally. And then it's kind of as that viral took off and you, your YouTube took off even more. Cause I mean, what did you, I think you, well, you had less than a hundred K subscribers before that viral, right? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe quarter of a million. I'm, I really can't uh, remember. Yeah, maybe, so maybe I remember I be wrong, the numbers it, in the time against the timeline. It yeah. sailed from that point onwards. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Crazy to watch. Yeah um and yeah as you said like the algorithms because suddenly there was a lot more kind of i mean one i can remember was like we got stuck in an abandoned swimming pool mm. uh, and stuff like that and i mean to be completely honest i've i've de my mindset has definitely shifted because of it's it's now kind of an undeniable thing and and kira and jimmy covered it so well yeah, yeah. recently but i definitely initially was like ah, i don't like the I don't like mm. the clickbait. And I think something that definitely didn't sit that well with me was like the fake when, when you, cause there was obviously that like the subsequent POVs where some of them kind of had like a fake intro. The Moroccan knife man is the one I kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd watch it and be like, ah, it's fake. But then, yeah, it, like, yeah, big time, big but it time, brings sure. in, it brings in the sort of mm. tens of millions of views and you're like, okay, it, like it's but then, but then next week's video was like, what's then like, something? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's no, it's like the, what is that noise? Can you hear that? That's exactly what I was on about. I'm going to do that. Your dad. Keelan's muted himself. And then next week, me next week's video would be like the, the extras of, I mean, the BTS of that video. Yeah. Like yeah. Knife man and everything. Yeah. Which very is, true. But I think nowadays it's clear it like, like that's the entertainment thing. But like if people feel they've been duped, then it's like mm, Yeah. Know, sure. Yeah. The the one right, uh, right, yeah, for sure. It, yeah, if someone else if someone else did that, like it would sure leave like a bit of a weird taste in my mouth. And yeah, yeah. It does often for sure when people still do that. Well actually that was the question I had is like what 
because I feel like you're definitely one of out out, out of kind of the star of seven. Mm. You're one of the most like I don't know. I don't know what I mean, but snobby. like snobby. Snobby. <laughs> would you say? <laughs> like, like, uh, I don't know. Opinionated, I guess. About yeah, and I, I feel like yeah. you. I could imagine you as being one of the ones who like wouldn't be so keen on like a clickbaity idea or faking. I mean, okay. So here's an example: the racing the London tube video, which I actually watched the first time, thought it was completely genuine, and then read some comments, and then obviously everyone started picking it apart. That didn't have a follow up saying, "Okay, this was fake." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where yeah, we, we we definitely felt like we missed the mark with that. We were like, yeah, we have completely like, like where the line between like entertainment and just being like, like kind of faking and kind of yeah. being a dick like that. We kind of jumped the line with that one. And afterwards, when like so many people like were like, yeah, you guys are phonies. We were like, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. And is that like a constant dialogue in terms of kind of because there was definitely a period where the a lot of these POVs were coming out mm -hmm. and especially some of the later ones it felt like maybe you were kind of riding the the like almost like the first ones felt quite organic and then some of yeah. them felt a bit more like oh let's let like let's go and try and get another viral guys like let's go and sort of <laughs> scrape another pov out of the barrel yeah for sure that's that's like um that's part of it for sure but i guess yeah. um for the most part we're still producing something that um like the POVs, that's definitely stuff that we're proud of kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like whether it's got like that whole like fish hook kind of thing to grab the attention of the, the yeah. viewer and everything. Like like it was saying in the recent Gym of the Giant thing. Exactly, but yeah. It's like, um, I guess, catching the attention and then retaining the attention. Like you've got to have it's got something to that's good. And then there's yeah. retaining the person as well, like to keep them like yeah to make them subscribe and then make them a fan and then make them like a, f a fan enough that they want to wear your merch and like associate yeah. themselves with you which is why i think you guys have done it so it, and it, the thing with you guys is it is so organic because there's no like forced friendship or camaraderie that feels like because people can smell bullshit through a screen mm. like you know when you see guy you guys messing around that that is like friendship and and fun that has been kind of put together over a decade like it's not it's it's so it's so genuine um i think in that sense we're uh that's where we're most lucky where yeah. we're the most lucky <laughs> yeah, we're very lucky that yeah, um, yeah. we have the seven of us and we all kind of not only have the same drive for like uh adventure and parkour and stuff but i think humor as well yeah yeah because there's a lot of in jokes and things that can't you mm. can't make up and rush so it's like and i think watching it from the outside it makes the viewer like want to feel involved and want to be a part of it and then kind of as yeah, you yeah. Said, i don't know what it is it's, it's funny it definitely works and the viewers seem to get it it's yeah and i think it's taken a long time for you guys to obviously develop that but it's it's you it would be very very hard to like just create that overnight Mm. Uh, I don't think you get a group of guys and be like, "Oh, you need to be like this. You need to do this. This is the style of stuff you have to put out." Like, I don't. I mean, I that's that's. Work. I guess that's one great reason. That's one great thing with the Motors projects as well. The way, um, obviously, Keelan, Luke, and Max—they're all like uh, from yeah. Rumen and everything. And and of course, um, Max and Luke have known each other since they've started parkour, or maybe yeah, before. Yeah. I'm not sure. But um, but so yeah, there's that element of that in there. So well yeah. done, well done for snatching up those boys because you've, you've already <laughs> you've, ticked, you've ticked the authenticity box there. <laughs> I mean, speaking of Morris, it does feel like in more recent years it's kind of felt like things are coming to place in terms of like dynamics between people and things like this, which is nice. No, absolutely, it, yeah. it never felt like we were trying to force it, but I, especially me, given that I was kind of the older one sponsoring the guys, you have like not aspirations of like how it's going to be but you're like well let's let's get these guys together and sort of develop something so it's it's nice to see it taking its own stride um yeah. but uh i think for you guys in more recent like the sort of last year or so you're there was definitely a period where i felt like i wasn't watching nearly as many story videos because they felt maybe a bit too forced down the viral path or at least some of them did whereas nowadays like i think because 
you've taken that audience, you've grown it to like a massive level. And now so much of your content is just sick parkour content mm. with little like bits here and there that spark, like maybe kind of tie in a new uh, sort of a, I don't know, a clickbait title to bring some people mm. in about some roof jumps or whatever. But at the end of the day, the like the base level is just so fucking sick. And it's like, sick. it's yeah, such, yeah. it's such a nice balance. And then obviously every so often, and it's the type of stuff that you can't rush you get the Thamesmead video mm. or like C and Jet. And I mean, the Thamesmead video is my favorite video this year, completely. Like, mm, that's it. Yeah. Um, I'm glad so, I wasn't involved with that one. Yeah. Was that your wrist? Injuries got too much. No, not wrist. I think it was um, back and ankle. Oh, really? Back and ankle. But it's, <laughs> it's, it's so impressive that you managed to maintain that balance. And mm. now you think. I think Sorry. that's uh, another. That's a balance that we're also very lucky with, because um, of course some of us are more eager to like push down the viral route, and then like some of us like within like the group chat like um, will be we're all like vocal and honest about if if this um, what part of an idea like doesn't really smack, uh, yeah. doesn't really like. Uh, come across too authentic or whatever so we've got like a great balance like if 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 it was just me in charge like it star would nowhere near be where it is like i i'm not one to like kind of push for like elaborate ideas to um like it would just all be training videos and it would just not do well <laughs> at all i can 100 percent say that but with with the balance between like each Seven, yeah. seven of us it'll be very interesting to see where story would go with just without even one, one even yeah. one person josh, taken if you know what i mean josh described this when we did the uh the roof culture interviews and he said that there's like this this scale of i think he literally said like good and evil and <laughs> and he, he like i think he put himself and like drew down like near the more, like kind of the like the e more evil thing but then he put like i think sasha and a couple of others like so there was a sasha scale and, and he said that like you whatever it is because oh i it, i think the reason he said good and evil is because we were talking about like the morals of the whole rooftop thing because <laughs> if you remember that there was that rumor that the guy got like fired and all that kind of stuff and um so Which i think guy? the 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 security guard from the viral clip the hong in hong kong yeah yeah, right. yeah 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 i remember i think we heard i don't know i don't know we i think i don't think we ever knew if it was bullshit or not. Fair enough. he was trying to fucking kick toby <laughs> no no not the pov not the pov the the guy when we did roof culture asia when max did the viral clip oh on that roof and then i think right. we got like an instagram message saying like oh he got yes fucked. i remember I yeah sure if it was real That's but i savage. think richard was doing the interviews and was kind of priving pro probing down the like the moral implications and josh mm. about this scale but he said that like the entire thing everyone on it balances everyone out so any decision is like is kind of mutual mu mutual and like is is balanced because of the transparency between you guys which i found really interesting and yeah. it's is that something that like has there ever been a time where it hasn't felt balanced and transparent or have you just always kind of naturally organically like come up having this dialogue between you guys yeah it's it's i think it's always been pretty balanced the um there's always been it's always been quite democratic i suppose yeah 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 it's it's it kind of i find that kind of stuff interesting because i mean keelan will like he'll we we in motors will kind of have discussions especially kind of around clothing and business business things that maybe i have a more a deeper knowledge of because i have to deal with it kind of mm. I, I like a financial decision but then some of the guys might sort of i don't know it'll be like oh where should we go next and people are like australia and it's like we we can't afford that yeah and then it's kind of it's i i basically am aspiring to kind of get motors to that same level because i, I really want to have a completely like level-headed thing because I, I i guess i am in some ways a leader in terms of a lot of the decisions but i, I like to have that that mutual conversation going on so yeah we, absolutely we all feel like we're making decisions at the same time yeah i mean um, there's definitely things that you're um you'll be more able to make uh like grounded decisions on because you have a lot more experience um mm. and a lot more understanding of like your financial 
um, yeah, yeah. Like but you I can think financially afford and stuff. As the but, guys are maturing, it's really nice to see because, like, I think when you go, when like Keelan Keelan and that were kind of 15, 16, we try mm. and have conversations and it just wasn't wasn't the same as when it is now. And like, yeah, we can have much kind of more mature conversations about stuff. Mm. But, um, yeah, so, so the first POV took off, the YouTube took off, suddenly ad revenue is a thing. Like, suddenly you guys essentially have a budget coming in from laptops running out of charge. You guys have a budget coming in from YouTube that is essentially saying, like, here's, like, oh, well done, you've made all these videos, here's more money, and it mm. just allowed you guys to just take that and, like, accelerate with it. Yeah. What that was great. I mean, like in, it, we were able to fund like Mexico and like there was a, a time when we were getting like a hefty amount from YouTube. Um, yeah. And it was funding like all the trips and we were like eating so much food and like staying in like pretty nice Airbnbs, like not yeah. like, like but like, but you yeah, could, we, yeah. uh, and like, I mean, could have stuff. I don't, I don't know exact figures, but I've kind of heard numbers, but we won't disclose anything on here, but like it, was it essentially just like you you just knew that if you put out your monthly videos and as long as you were hitting kind of decently viral numbers and you had previous virals still ticking over like yeah. your your travel and and life and expenditure is essentially just covered like you just it was just a case of tr just trying to maintain that yeah pretty much yeah, yeah. That, um, that was working very well <laughs> and then it all ended yeah it all ended I mean, and uh, was that an overnight thing, right? Like there was no warning about that. Yeah, there, there was, there was nothing beforehand. So suddenly, just, like, all the videos, all the videos were demonetized, like including, um, and I think a lot of the viral videos that were still like, like Hong Kong POV that was on like 18 million views at the time, yeah. like it was still ticking up and like, um, I mean, that, that must getting, be hard, right? Yeah, getting um, like millions of views quite uh, regularly, and then. And then it kind of hit a wall. Um, yeah, yeah. And of course, like when that hits a wall, like we're getting less money as well, including like so many other of the viral videos that were ticking over and getting accumulating more money and stuff to fund, yeah. the, trip, fund the clothing. Was that um, like uh, scary in a way? I mean, I, I'm, I would assume kind of that you guys weren't pissing money up the wall to the extent where. <laughs> Because you can imagine some people, kind of, I don't know, a Logan Paul type character might get into that situation and they're spending everything. And then when that cash, when the tap turns off, they're like, oh, nothing's left. Mm. But I'm assuming it didn't kind of put the potential future of Star in jeopardy, but it was more just yeah. like, oh. I think we had a nice, we had a nice time uh, where... It, it was it was kind of a short period, I guess, as well. So like... Yeah. Um, we were reliant on the clothing for like a very long time to fund all the trips. And then we had a short period where it's like, oh, this is super comfortable. We can like the YouTube is pretty much paying for all the trips. And then the clothing is just going like it's looking after it's itself and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and paying us kind of thing. Because um, none of us took any of the YouTube video like we our salaries are all paid by clothing and still yeah. are. Um, but now the clothing is paying our salaries and is paying uh, for all the trips and everything. <laughs> Thing. so uh now it's kind of back to normal again in terms of like uh it's nice to think of it like that like anyway like like how it's building up building up it's like oh yeah things are going really great and it's like oh well i guess things are a bit back to normal now rather than just like oh no we've taken a massive hit and yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. but i imagine that was pretty yeah fucking horrible initially because i i reckon there was was there a period of like oh we can get it back like it'll we'll get them yes. re-monetized yeah, yeah that's that that's the the hope the hope that crushes crushes people's uh, fighting every battle is there any history of people getting re-monetized um yes but it oh, um, really it requires them deleting a lot of videos ah. um and completely changing up their uh oh. content style which uh both things we don't really want to do yeah and yeah. even then because there's very little dialogue with youtube like we could like make that sacrifice and then it just not nothing nothing happened really from my understanding at least anyway yeah. so now i guess we we're just uh being a lot more frugal 
with uh, the choices of trips that we take. Moldo- yep. Mold- Moldova being one of them. Um, but yeah, keep it, keeping it around Europe and stuff, looking what flights are cheap. Um, but it still works because I think by this stage, you guys have established like you don't need a fancy location to sell a video. It just has to be mm-hmm. you guys. Yeah, just just a, a, an idea. And uh, yeah, I mean, next next video, try try finding a rug and be in it because it could do really well. What? I said, try finding a rug and beating it. Why? Keelan's video. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keelan, you've muted yourself, right? Yeah, I just realized now. Oh, have you been muted? I'm, on, I'm on the rug. Yeah, I am. I, oh, you're my sitting on the drilling rug. And then, yeah, well, not on it, but chair on top. Yeah. Okay. If, if Keelan mm. is very quiet, his dad is, what, drilling? Yeah, he's doing the bathrooms below me and this uh... carpentry work on the bathroom speaking so. of bathroom can i go for a piss and you two chat for a minute yeah go for it we, go need, for the, it. we need the podcast piss so, yeah so for the listeners that um didn't quite understand the whole rug thing if you've if you follow this this team called the motors projects they they released a video recently the they don't want to see me beating a rug quarantine diaries and and keelan in his section is um He's beating a rug, talking about beating a rug, and then then you see the beaten, said beaten rug in his room. And I, I recorded, uh, I was watching this on my TV, so I'd proper set up for a good watch. And um, I, I, I didn't know what I was, was coming. It was brilliant. I, I, had to, I, had to re, I rewinded it, filmed the screen, filmed my face. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And then and then sent it to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was funny. Max edited it, so I just gave him footage and was just like, "Yeah, this is what I've been doing." I'm gonna be oh, honest. Yeah. I've been doing much oh, beating a rug. No, it, it's cool. But we're we're no, so inspired by the... of you saying like, "Yeah, we're stars. Like we're still like training and like." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we. It was like our like little version of your guys' um, lockdown videos. Apart yeah. from that, <laughs> we're all inside. <laughs> beating Max, right. Max and Benj like driving places and they're, they're thriving right now like <laughs> everything's, yeah, everything's closed they're just biz- yeah, business as usual yeah, have, you yeah. got, have, have you been so jealous. have you had people to train with um no not really and i don't think it would be too bad to go out and train with people either mm. like yeah so long as you're keeping your distance and they're not touching your devices and stuff like they yeah, can just yeah. Yeah, film film an airdrop or something should definitely utilize that a lot more and probably yeah. will in yeah. the yeah. coming weeks i think phil it, said he phil said he was doing that yeah 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 it's yeah, I, mean, I mean i will find it very difficult to not um you got to remember the whole time you're with them you just like yeah no hard. i mean it's going to be really hard to not make out with joe hendo <laughs> because <laughs> normally, normally it's like oh you're right joe how you doing and then and we kind of Give each other a bit of a peck, and then yeah, a peck yeah. would turn into you know a French kiss. And yeah, and it goes from there. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to to not do that. And Kai as well. Don't get me started on Kai. <laughs> Those hairy shoulders. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Mm. Oh, Have God. you been training on your own like a lot then, like nearly every day, or not really? Not not nearly every day. I I think I've been um I've been lifting twice a week and following like mm. a little quarantine program that I've made. Um, Oh, cool. Um, so I've been uh, had like a bunch of rest days, and uh, so yeah, I've been training like maybe like twice a week, two solo sessions mm. a week, and then two lifting sessions a week, um, and cool. then sometimes little light sessions like when I'm just like out cycling and stuff, where the intention is just to go and cycle to get some active recovery for the for the yeah. legs. And oh, you found that like concrete plyo when you went cycling, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's sick. What the concrete plow in the video? Mm. That was just going out cycling. Cause that I, 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 as in, I found I found it on a bike ride and then oh, came back and that came back and hit it on a fresh day. Where so I was you ca- casually just cycling by and then would hit that. No, no. <laughs> <It's just laughs> you, see, session. you see, when you're when you're twenty eight, when you're twenty eight and have accumulated fourteen years of um, of impact, you you can't really do stuff like that on the fly. <laughs> Live right there, it, yeah. yeah. 40 minutes to warm up to that <laughs> yeah the sad reality yeah, it's, it's getting harder and harder yeah but yeah it's funny it's funny how you've said like um and it's very nice that it seems like i've been um like haven't dipped or have been very active and stuff considering the last two years i've been 
have had like lots of injuries and stuff. Um, no, nah, I think back, hips, ankles. You've been, a- you've been active, but I feel like your mindset's always stayed the same as well. But we, I mean, sure. we've already said that, but which is yeah. good. It's never dips. You never like changed your opinions on something sure. like dramatically. I wouldn't say. Yeah. Oh, yeah. As in, like, yeah. Like, dipped out of parkour and and yeah. Yeah, so, you still maintain vo- being, being vocal. And I think even if, like, mm-hmm. let's say your hip is bad and maybe, oh, I haven't seen Callum do a big jump in the last couple of weeks, I've seen you lifting on your stories. Like, you're still putting yeah. out stuff that is relatable to mm-hmm. sort of parkour and things. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, and I think that's what a lot of people just forget about. And I might, even I'm bad at it with, like, it's the, the sad thing about maintaining social media is that to sort of maintain that presence, it just helps to be putting out a little steady stream yeah and uh, i guess that's not my intention really for uploading like the lifting stuff because i know like I, I lose a lot of followers like <laughs> like lifting and stuff and it's not to like keep um like yeah i'm still here guys still yeah, no, like, but i think I, I think i just upload it because i like it it's and I, I, it's, yeah. it's, it's nice to like watch back some lifting with some heavy metal music yeah, or something like that say. That yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of like in, it's kind of indulgent and you feel good about what you've done a bit yeah, yeah um <laughs> so to to sort of go back to the the youtube stuff the if i'm right in in right in thinking from what i've heard the the hong kong pov sparked an interest from a certain michael bay right oh yeah yeah because <laughs> i have a few questions related to this this bit because when we were previously meant to record the podcast the film had come out like two days prior so i kind of wrote a few things about that but um yeah so he he saw that that pov right and then yeah did he what fly to london to meet you guys um yeah so we got the email uh from like the office of michael bay and we thought it was completely (laughs) fake like (laughs) oh really yeah and they were just starting production and everything i think um, they were on their way back from um, like the art director and Michael Bay were on their way back from scouting in Florence. Um, uh, okay. And yeah, they swung by and we met them in London. Um, we were fucking hyped, of course. Like, yeah, yeah. We met them on like the terrace of this really nice um, like hotel. And he was already like ordering people around, like people, like the hotel staff and such. <laughs> what i mean what, what uh, yeah, is that strange. story do you just go out there and michael bay's sitting there just like oh hi <laughs> no, we, we met him like in the lobby and um and he was like dressed in all white with a fucking tatty transformers cap um, oh, <laughs> and um and he was like yeah we we got to keep this quick guys because because we got another park or team in 45 minutes and we were just like i'm just fucking with you yeah uh that was that was a funny experience yeah he, he came specific to london specifically to meet with us yeah. yeah i mean that has to be one of the biggest well that leading onto the film has to be kind of one of the biggest things that you've got from youtube right i guess you met like uh what rio ferdinand was it was it rio ferdinand i don't know uh, if it was... ronaldinho Ronaldinho. yeah 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 one of those yeah people. one of the best one of the best footballers of all time yeah yeah but yeah, I mean the the six underground thing seemed fairly massive, and mm. what? So what was the timeline of that? You met him, and they were like, "Yeah, cool, we want you in." Um, I can't remember to be honest. <laughs> um, I th- yeah, I think just after that conversation, they seemed like pretty. Um, like I, I don't know if they were looking at any other teams or anything, but yeah, yeah it seems like they wanted us. I suppose I'm not sure. Sick. And it, I mean, it, but it was it wasn't like oh, we want you to do a few stunts. It was like you're kind of yeah, yeah. Like they, they wanted us to lead. Yeah, that's it. They like we were blown away that they actually wanted us to lead the whole. Like they wanted that was it. They they wanted the parkour in it to be time proofed, and they they wanted uh, it uh, not to be like kind of lame and stuff yeah, yeah but then they fucking shot themselves in the foot because they to um 
the, Hon- nah, nah, nah. The, the Hong Kong scene that Sasha fucking shot and directed. They've got that. Oh, fucking hell. They, do they I, not know that that's a meme? If they wanted oh, yeah. to make it like not tacky, like completely mm. tacky. Like, oh. And then they that was awful. You blew, when you that blew it, guys. You blew it. That's <laughs> like, no. I mean, oh, okay. if you're watching the whole, if you're watching the POV the whole, shot as well, if you watch, yeah, yeah, if you're watching the whole film, um, like it doesn't like seem out of place. To be no, fair, no, like the whole film is pretty tacky and freaking weird. weird. Yeah, like loads of jokes that just completely miss the mark and stuff as well. It was the, con- the continuity errors as well, like a car driving oh, on a busy sure. street and then just not being on a busy street and things. <laughs> and and there's there's a part like the um um. You can just see Drew's face, like yeah, yeah, in yeah, a yeah, slow mo yeah. shot, yeah, like uh, instead of Ben Hardy, and yeah. like a lot of people tore that part apart, like critics jumping and stuff. out towards the camera. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. But so to to rewind slightly, so like yeah, because I mean in the credits you're credited as like the story unit, so you guys were yeah. brought in as not only like doubles, but kind of characters in their own. Well, not I guess some of you were doubles, and then like you mm. had a with like because Hazal got involved and stuff like that um but Sasha Sasha got the opportunity to actually be involved in shooting the thing right which is fucking yeah. huge do you want me to shut the window um because it's can you hear that loud like engine noise I could shut the window I can I'll kind of it hear it hey uh, nah, eh, I don't know it's shut it <laughs> yeah let's, let's see. turn this light on me that's fine you're not that dog <laughs> all right <laughs> one sec I guess audio is probably where we get most of the listeners compared yeah. to the new videos. I can hear, I can hear a humming, but I just thought it was. Yeah, it was my background noise. But it's not even any darker. Sorry, listeners. No, it's, that's absolutely fun. Didn't really want to close the window. I just wanted to cut you off. <laughs> that was another cut-off point, Callum. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Sasha got to. Was he kind of? At what point was it like? Yeah, Sasha, you're actually going to be helping film this thing. Yeah, I, I guess they wanted people that knew how to film movement. Um, yeah, I guess I'm not sure if there was any specific point, but we we understood that um, during shooting in Budapest that we'd have uh, like Sasha would be directing it and and uh, what's it called DOPing. Yeah, I think just DOPing maybe. Um, yeah, and then I think there was a bit of a like we were we were told by Michael Bay that pretty much, and then they had um, this other DOP come in on the first day of shooting, uh, Roberto, who would filmed in numerous Michael Bay films. He was in Av- oh, okay. he, he he was DOP in, in Avatar, um, oh. and yeah, loads of big things. And then there was Sasha that was uh, <laughs> like th- there was there was confusion pretty much like Sasha yeah, still yeah. thought that he was like in charge. And Sasha's the most agreeable person you will ever meet. Like he's yeah. he he will not mean to like uh, upset. to be a dick or yeah. upset anyone or rock the boat. Um, and this Roberto guy, like he's like king shit. Like he he th- he's the bee's knees, and like yeah. Sasha's, and of course we're all just listening to Sasha, like <laughs> like and um and this guy, like there was it boiled up to the point where like and Roberto, he's wearing like this full kit, he's filming with like a red on like the, the stabilizer that attaches to your body and everything. He just takes it off at one point and just throws it on the ground. It's like. And he's he's fuck he's pissed off at like wow. that they're, that they're only listening to Sasha and and getting all his shots and fuck, yeah. we hear the next day uh, from uh, I think the producers like what the fuck happened today guys <laughs> like and we were like what <laughs> we didn't understand like um, yeah and the next day we shot everything again like and he just pretty much shot every every angle that Sasha got. But he just, just shot. Yeah, he Sasha. just copied Sasha yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much. Like, uh, oh, man, and his his footage was obviously sick. But like, it's just fucking weird how he copied yeah. Sasha's shots. And then Sasha got these long. Like, he he Sasha was like, "Fuck it, I'll leave him to it." Um, and he filmed these long shots from like uh, a tower. And then 
Roberto did the fucking, did the same. He he climbed this tower like, uh, and Sasha just thinks he's getting he's getting like these extra kind of shots, but then he, yeah, like, yeah, follows him up and does the same. And all the while, like the guys had to do these long runs, like they're long like, runs, oh, um, like so many times in on that first day, and it was ad- it was definitely adequate, like. Um, and then they had to do it all again the next day. And of course, like Sasha, Sasha doesn't want to like just, he has sympathy for the guys because he knows how hard it is. Yeah. Like, yeah. What they're doing. But Roberto, on the other hand, is like, yeah, let's go for another one. It wasn't completely perfect on my end. Like, <laughs> which, which, of course, in a film you have to do, but like they'd done, they'd been going all day the day before and all day. Yeah. I mean, some of the stunt stuff that like in your behind the scenes video look fucking tough, like really, really rough. Mm. I, I, I mean, I, I always hear, and I've heard from some of you guys, like stunts are just, they're long, like it's a lot of sitting around and then it's yeah. kind of go, go, go. And then sit down. It, like, was it that the same case for this? Yeah. 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 Pretty much. And, and the annoying thing is they, they barely used any of that footage because it didn't have the level of jeopardy that, um, like they didn't have like death drop roof gaps like Michael Bay kind of wanted. Like he he had oh, really? the idea of the shot. So that Budapest stuff, like the long runs on the rooftop, um, like only a tiny fraction of it was used. And yeah. then uh, when filming in Rome, we tried to kind of make up for it. We we were um, going to have this scene, um, uh, which is part of like the Hong Kong high rise section where they use the run. Yeah. Do, 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 do. That's why and, they in the POV from your POV, the the thing. Oh, yeah, shit, of course. Yeah, that's what you meant earlier. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah. Like, that was in the um, the Budapest part. Um, <laughs> but, um, what was I saying? When you were filming in Rome. Yeah, when we were filming in Rome, we tried to, um, he wanted us to get stuff like that. So he wanted us... Um, but but he knew the safe the safety thing was the ultim- ultimately the problem why they we couldn't do like roof gaps and stuff and doing any of the stuff that we wanted um, with wire and everything just made it made yeah it shit. Um, so he let us be like some secret parkour unit like um, that was filming and we we had. Um, like one lighting guy, one costume guy, and we had a couple of stuntmen that were in the scene. Um, oh, really? And oh, it's so funny actually. And and, and we we shot some previous stuff uh, for Michael Bay. Um, Sasha shot it and edited it and sent it over. Michael Bay fucking loved it. Yeah. Um, and he was like, "Yeah, you guys are going to shoot this. It's going to be super private." Um, and there there was this moment on set where Sasha was filming Michael Bay, like we were, we were meant to be shooting BTS. Like it's, yeah. it's in our, it was in our contract and Michael Bay is already fuming. Like, um, like, and there's the whole thing of like, Oh Jesus is coming. Look, look busy kind of thing. And everyone's flustering around. Like, and when he's fucking furious, you get out of his way. Oh, yeah. like, he, uh, he's a coked up monster. Kind of <laughs> um, like an evil dictator. And yeah. so, he clocked Sasha filming for BTS. It was definitely a bad time to be filming, but like he was like just in the corner, like he c- could not have even seen him. Yeah. And uh, he he locks eyes, like stop rolling that fucking camera, stop rolling that fucking camera. And and, and the on the clip, like it just stops recording. But I was standing next to him, and he's fucking going ham at Sasha. And then like goes upstairs, and you can hear him shouting at other people. And then he shouts to the producer, "Hey JJ, and get that fucking kid off my set." Oh, wow. <laughs> so like um but yeah the, the producer was like yeah don't don't worry about it but um uh, yeah i've heard he's chaos yeah right? but then sasha went sasha and toby went away to film something in india uh with pam um yeah. for this another another film entirely uh and then mike michael bay obviously sees this previous previous stuff that we shot for this scene and uh he loves it and and bumps into me and Josh on the way to uh, set, and he's like, "Oh, how are we gonna sh- how are we gonna shoot this scene then, boys? Are we gonna do it all on Sony's or what?" And uh, Josh is like, "Oh, I, I guess we we need to get our filmer back. We need to get our cameraman back, Sasha." It's like, "All right, we'll get him in." <laughs> and there's there's this briefing one morning. Sasha comes back from India, of course, and 
he locks eyes with Sasha. Um, and he definitely realizes like that the kid that he fucking tore apart is the kid that yeah yeah <laughs> that shot the scene that he fucking loved and that's amazing and, and Sasha since has, has developed a bit of a phobia of um, Michael Bay <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's hilarious as well it's hilarious as well because like um, in the, the New York um, performance we did with the premiere, like with the yeah. paparazzi and everything, when we we all drop down and like he's standing by the container and Sasha ends up like right next to him and is like just arm in arm with Michael Bay. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're in my nightmares. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, Sasha. Um, um, but yeah, the scene. He was super happy with the scene, I guess. That, we we that, were amazed by how much they used of that scene. It was so cool. Yeah. Ooh, that scene was completely directed by Sasha. And I'm that's sure. the like nighttime stuff, the way you're running through that. Like, mm. yeah, 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 yeah. Toby showed me some of that previous stuff that I probably shouldn't have seen, but it was at Elwood. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was really sick. Um, it yeah. that did just remind me, another one of Star's ridiculous stories is the fact that you all got kicked out of India. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Jesus Christ, that, yeah. that's a whole nother thing to talk about but are you allowed to go back um I, pardon me i think we should be able to because we weren't officially deported you were like, just there was no there was no legislative process yeah they kept us overnight um none of us slept like mm, we were led to believe that we were going back to the hotel but then they took us to the airport and we're like shouting in their faces, like calling them cunts and everything. Did you um, have your bags and stuff? Huh? No, that's the thing. We didn't have bags, passports or anything. We stayed at the airport for like two hours. Toby wasn't in like uh, the video. So Toby was like technically a free man. So he was like out of the van. Like uh, we were like held in this van at the airport. Mm-hmm. He was outside the van, like mediating with um, um like the police trying to get them to take us back to the hotel, at least to get all of our stuff and our passports. And but we thought Toby behind the camera. Thought, that was the video behind the camera. Hmm. Oh well, was no, that? no. Um, because it was it was shot with a POV. I think I can't remember what Toby uh, was doing okay. at the time or why he wasn't in the video. But yeah, um, he wasn't like. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if it was just he was like behind the camera and therefore they hadn't seen him. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> that'll be dumb. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um What's it called? Um, yeah, so they took us back to the hotel and we got all our bags and everything. Fucking hell. <laughs> that's, that's another hectic one. And that also reminded me of why you were shooting Six Underground. You also jumped on all the old police cars and then had your yeah. phone taken away, right? Yeah. I mean, that police car That police car was like... Ancient. It, it was out of commission. It was... Yeah. It was yeah. Destroyed. And yeah, we just thought, thought it would be funny to do something. Toby was telling me that you got like marched out of the hotel by the police, like in front. Yeah, of them. yeah. They woke us up at. Uh, there was they were knocking on the door at seven in the morning. I thought it was like, um, like the maid uh, <laughs> coming to clean the room every morning. Would be like, no, no. Oh, we're being arrested. <laughs> and then the knocking continued. I was like, the fuck's sake, go away. Just open the door, just like police. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that sucked. They stole our phones and everything. Yeah, you never got them back, right? But yeah, it was what, what was really annoying was like the we got um, completely slated by the uh, Italian parkour community, Rome, not just the Rome parkour community, but yeah, yeah, yeah. The media painted you really definitely some, yeah, yeah, but and painted parkour really badly and definitely um, did some damage, potentially damage that um, um, I hope the rome parkour community hasn't suffered too much from but yeah. oh really wow Super guilty for that yeah yeah that's savage um so i'm literally just gonna rush to have a piss quickly my stomach is gonna be loud uh so i mean yeah you you have a, a nice cameo in is, a... is he all right is keelan okay he seems really off he's not talking very much i buy in all the time no he, <laughs> said, he said when there's guests on he likes to listen yeah yeah i know i know i listen i listen to the podcast enough (laughs) tonight but um yeah you've you've got a nice cameo chasing in a suit yeah yeah (laughs) was that i mean yeah with i i can imagine the last thing you want to be cameoing as is is somebody in a suit in a suit just for the 
<laughs> sort of parkour stereotype. But oh, yeah, yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah. How uh, how was kind of your roles, your involvement? Because obviously Drew and Benj got a kind of probably the the, the lion's share of yeah, absolutely. Mm. And in terms of hours and everything as well, yeah. and they were in Florence and stuff too. But yeah, but like you, that was good for you. Like you enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Not. Good. I guess I guess you didn't really do any like hardcore stunts, did you? No, I, d- I was I was very happy that I didn't have to do. I did very little parkour. Like most of my stuff was just like running and a few like pliers yeah. and stuff and climbing up and down this crane because it was freshly after I broke my wrist pretty much. And oh, I didn't shit. do and I didn't do anything in Budapest as well. And I was lucky, very luckily, uh, wasn't needed for Budapest. But um and super lucky that I wasn't called to do anything that required uh my wrist because it, it was know about your wrist. freshly broken i mean in budapest i still thought it was sprained like i hadn't been to the hospital yet yeah, um, but... no they didn't no one knew shit and yeah i was wearing i was wearing a brace like um yeah but apart from <laughs> get keep, kicked off. keep it keep it uh secret do you know yeah. uh mike snow the the singer no, Mike. I Mike. I think. I think. I think it's Mike Snow. Stunty Smo. He is on Instagram. No. He's like a, a ginger um, parkour guy from uh, Adelaide or Brisbane. I can't remember. Uh, he, he's. A, he's a yeah, a stunt man, and he he got called onto the film um, shortly after fucking up his wrist as well, um, doing the suicide wall run backwards, like the scary way, and he slipped, oh face planted at the bottom, like like the worst i've seen down, down the, the bottom yeah like like um oh, bad, bad. He, he, got, he got to the ledge and like or, or like you know like the underhang of the ledge and then just yeah. like kept rotating and then fell down like oh. sure about on, onto the flat or onto the steps but yeah um oh, there, so there was me me and him um like it's like oh how's your wrist man yeah it's all right i'm just terrified that they're gonna make me do anything it's like yeah same, yeah <laughs> um, and I guess he was like maybe more expendable um, than me in terms of like they have loads of different stunt men to like at their disposal. So yeah. like if they find out that he's got any injury, then he's fucking gone. Kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's quite funny. I'll no, send, yeah. you, send you the video of that battle because it's. I'm it's keen to see that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my um, god. So last last sort of six underground question because the films obviously. It's, it's old news now, but I mean, did what was your involvement? Like, did you actually get to hang out with Ryan Reynolds or anything like this? Like, <laughs> no, uh, no. We, we were like hanging around on set with him and stuff and just like made eye contact a couple of times. That's that's pretty much it. Oh, but Drew, it, um, he he thought Drew was Ben Hardy at one point. Oh, and, really? Um, like we start, started talking to him and Drew was like, oh, I'm, I'm actually the stunt double. <laughs> and um, Ryan Reynolds was just like, ah. Oh. A good damn double or something like that. <laughs> we got we got proper friendly with uh ben hardy and stuff because yeah. max um no uh benj and drew were like teaching him parkour uh yeah. like beforehand is is that because people like ryan reynolds are kind of ushered in for their lines and then ushered out or like yeah pretty much like they, yeah like the stars weren't like um sticking around that much ben yeah. it was a bit different for ben did you just dab keelan I sneezed and muted the mic. <laughs> Imagine. Dab it out. Dab it out. <laughs> um, is that just a weird environment then to like see? I mean, I've I've seen the behind yeah, the scenes for sure, the end, but nothing I've of that. Been size. watching like Ryan Reynolds film since like Van Wilder and stuff. Yeah, mm. that's very very strange. And in in New York as well, he walked through our green room. Uh, when we were doing our performance to introduce him for the Today Show. Oh was, yeah, it's quite weird. Like, yeah, <laughs> you're right, mate. Yeah. Crazy times. Um, you got any questions, Keelan? Yeah, I'm chilling. You're chilling. You uh, all right? I'll just worry because you're sitting in silence. No, it's all good. All right, okay. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, with Six Underground and obviously youtube uh clothing etc <clears throat> there has like undeniably kind of knowing you guys fairly closely there has been an introduction of money into your lives which in the parkour world is kind of a rarity for a lot of people you sort of a lot of you now have have sort of bought property or are renting and things and mm-hmm. obviously as we said a, a few years ago 
some of you were really kind of didn't have anything <laughs> yeah. has that been like a f i mean obviously it's it's not been like a f none of you guys have been in this to get rich but have you always tried to be sort of money-minded in terms of like the growth or has it always just felt like it's just it's just been like take it as it comes and um yeah pretty take it as it comes pretty much yeah all, all i ever wanted really um was to be kind of financially stable yep um because it just like me and sasha have have not been that like at any point in our life really yeah, um, like especially like 2015 uh we were like like stealing food to eat and everything and yeah uh, um yeah so like um that was uh yeah pretty rough time yeah and, and do you feel sort of sustainable now like do things feel like they're at a good level yeah yeah absolutely yeah that's good <clears throat> and does it i mean like does it feel like I, I think kind of as we touched on earlier like you 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 rely on a physical activity that relies on your joints and and stuff like this and obviously Stora as a brand is now like well established mm. and you have consistent clothing sales and things but when you look to the future of like 5 10 20 years is it like shit will like I mean what you're 27 like 10 years time 28 yeah so 10 10 years time you'll you'll be very close to 40 Mm. Your athletic career will not. <laughs> I know. <laughs> for ten, for me, it's ten. Like mm. your athletic career will not be sort of. Hopefully, it'll still be at, at, at a decent level, but it's not going to be kind of the same. So, yeah. what? How how does that make you feel in terms of just kind of sustaining the the like the store of vehicle, like <laughs> you personally, and then I guess as a collective have mm. plans, ideas, and things. Mm. Well, um, in terms of keeping it going, like I think the idea of uh, like a next generation of Stora might be something that uh, we might have to do to keep the name, keep the name going. Um, I mean, as you've you're proving with um, the Motus projects, um, like uh, that, that, that's like a possible a possible thing to do. Like start recruiting some some young, fresh talent and. Uh, <laughs> like to kind of i don't know like pass the torch or something but it's it's going to be so hard to um get something that's uh like star or even like motors projects because these kind of um yeah uh, relationships are, are very hard to come by and like creative uh you know mechanisms or whatever no for sure it's like how do you sort of just pick i mean if you guys were to pick up a group of athletes that you would expect that you've picked up like a and i guess an almost or at least i would feel like i'd want to see like a almost cohesive bunch of like rowdy mm. lads but you can't as we've already said just magic that out of thin air yeah, yeah exactly you so like planning like, planning to do that and then relying on that solely is yeah you know, a very hard thing to do but then yeah. i guess there's things like um um like starting a gym kind of thing we've been looking into that for a very long time on yeah, that yeah. Kind of thing but that's like uh like the coaching aspect i'm i'm definitely down to like um um go deep within that like yeah, um, be like head coach at like the star academy or something that's as well as um i'd really i'm already like um trying to develop something uh saleable for parkour athletes in terms of like uh like coaching like physical coaching uh like programming and stuff like a digital product um, you mean? yeah yeah yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Like, did, like a digital like set thing yeah um like maybe like like marx's thing and then yeah. have like a higher yeah. tier which is uh like personal coaching yes and, yeah, and yeah programming like I'm, I'm not i haven't worked it all out yet i'm still trying to um like i, I was working with some athletes including um your boy Jordan. Yep. Um, yep. I have heard this. And yeah, and Oliver Thorpe. Um, I start just started to try and work with Pam, uh, my neighbor Leon, who yeah. <laughs> is, of course like a parkour athlete, and it's uh, was coaching with Scott Jackson and everything. That's yeah. Recently, um, 
but yeah, I was pretty much just to gain experience and everything. And then the whole fucking coronavirus thing happened and all the gyms closed down. I know, <laughs> yeah, just been spending a lot of time developing, learning. And af after experimenting on myself for like nearly 10 years, like branching out and trying to do the same for other people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's even like, um, yeah. Any, I mean, if I was in a, the gym thing makes me think of like Bob Reese because those guys literally were just about to open their gym and then. Oh, the really? Career. Yeah, this massive gym out in America and the coronavirus is just like, like they were about to have their opening day. The whole thing was finished and then mm. it's like oh, lockdown and they can't do it. That so sucks. Like crazy I, year. And it's like obviously rent. I don't know what rent's like in America, but I, like imagine if you were in that same position, like rent in England is just. Have you heard of any, have you heard of any gym closures so far? I don't actually know. I've seen a lot of gyms like sort of please buy gift vouchers and things like this, but I, I'm not sure. I haven't heard of any like definite closures, but it's mm. a scary, scary time for like any physical. Yeah, sure. mm. um, so like, I mean, regarding Stora and the kind of the, the growth and everything, like, do you feel like what you have done in terms of, because I don't know, I look at Stora and I think there's some stuff that you guys have done that will be very hard for other people to ever do again. Things like the Michael Bay project, like there's kind of, there are certain things where parkour takes a step up to a level people become aware of it and opportunities come to that like the kind of the commercial jobs that we were all getting in like 2013 2014 that kind of stuff doesn't exist so much anymore so yeah, it's crazy actually yeah and, and i feel like you guys as like parkour youtubers have kind of you've like spiked an interest mm. taken some opportunities from that whether or not that's going to kind of go up or down is i guess sort of Un unseen yet but i couldn't imagine another parkour team let's say kind of um most scruffy boys whatever like a, a group spiking and getting similar opportunities like i couldn't imagine another director going like oh those guys i think those are kind of like a flash in a pan but would you, you say we're hogging it all no no i don't think you're hogging it i think what i mean is like uh do you think the level in terms of the audience and I mean, I guess even like clothing sales and the level of like brand that you have got Stora to is a flash in a pan is a kind of one off thing that has come with a spike. Or do you think, let's say, cause you look at skateboarding and you think yeah. all the big skate teams, they're not all at the same level, but they're all at a significantly bigger level than parkour teams in terms of audience sales, etc etc yeah how do you feel given that you are undoubtedly part of the team that is kind of at the highest point looking at the rest of the parkour community do you think that other teams can get themselves to a similar level not in terms of just like having a huge star army but as a like a cohesive branded team yeah um yeah i don't know it's fucking hard like and of course like um like it, it didn't. I think the most important thing to remember is, is um, with Stara, it didn't happen overnight. Like this spike, no. this spike that you're talking about, it is um, like we have kind of worked very hard to make that happen, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I think and continue uh, to work. Uh, yeah, yeah. I know a lot of teams. A lot of teams are doing their best to do that well, but I think it's just the consistency. It things only really started uh, growing. Um, like exponentially when we started doing the weekly uploads and stuff yeah. and of course like the virals and it's, it's a mixture of tons of things of course but there's no like there's no actual formula that i can give people and and i as like i said i i don't think i could um i would be the best one to give that out because like i'm probably not the most prominent person in the team that comes up with ideas and like the no the the main creative it like it's it's a it's a unit yeah and i think yeah. that's the thing is there is as we said like there is no formula like you guys have kind of walked your own path and it's it's worked and it's worked in like yeah. the best possible ways so mm. but uh, so yeah it's, it, it it kind of um yeah like we all of us want like the community to do like and and all the different brands and teams in the community to do as best as possible and it's sick seeing like um people pushing the culture so mm -hmm. well um but it's just like yeah we just want hope hopefully the public um hopefully even through being fans of us and everything can like 
they get so in interested in parkour like it doesn't just stop with us like it goes yeah, on yeah. their interest goes on to the motors projects and scruffy boys uh fat and yeah exactly because i think the english teams but yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> you get what i mean like, that's kind of an interesting thing because initially when you guys popped like you obviously had a huge influx of subscribers then I, I it felt like there were a lot of like younger kids and it's kind of very quick to go like oh they're all just like youtube fanboys because you mm. see I mean, I've, I've seen you guys refer to as youtubers whereas i think of you as a parkour team things like this yeah but it's like well if if jump britain affected i don't know a million people mm. and however many started parkour like and i think we've spoken about this on the podcast before like i i think it's almost undoubted there there will be a wave in five years where you meet a kid at a jam and it's like oh what got you into it and it'll be stora because it mm. used to be Jump Britain, it used to be Oleg's video, it used to be this and that. And I think there's this new wave coming of the kids who found parkour yeah. as you. And maybe Story, maybe they think Story is fucking lame and sell out now and they like mm. this other team or whatever, but they've they their their entrance to the sport has been because of you guys. And that's like mm. sort of unquestionably sick. So Yeah, yeah. That's that's a great feeling. Yeah, no, and yeah, I think it's maybe they watch the right video to get them into it and stuff. Yeah, well. and some I think some like, won't. Like, like and it's when people stop when people stop me in the street and and say like they love the videos and stuff i always ask oh how long have you been watching what was the first video that like got you into it and stuff yeah. it's always so different it's like really the swimming pool one? Oh man like, <laughs> um yeah i don't know like it's quite it's quite random we were training at hastings not long ago and this girl and her boyfriend walked past and she was the last person on earth i would expect to uh be interested in parkour or stora i i won't describe kind of what she yeah i i i can't i can't be mean but um she <laughs> she uh she was like oh those guys are like those stora guys i'm subscribed to them on youtube or something and like the guy the boyfriend didn't know but like this girl who just was the least physically suited to doing parkour i've ever seen like was like oh yeah she was like obviously quite a big fan so mm. it's it's interesting to see kind of who you've tapped into yeah it's it's, it's really cool i love yeah. like um that our culture is like leaking out to the public and it's like oh yeah you don't do parkour and you yeah but you know it and you respect yeah. it so i guess that's the important thing like making it uh culturally cool and making what you're doing um something that is like watchable and yeah. relatable well not not even so much relatable because but yeah it's people like seeing niche things as well but like uh, sure and i think we're all on the right path but as we've said it's not an overnight thing yeah. like I, I guess that's the thing with with any teams like uh, the consistency is the like i said um it's not just like making one video and then it hooking a person it's um um you got to retain them as fans uh, yeah if you're not releasing continuously um then those fans are going to go cold and they're going to drop off and you're just going to be constantly getting new fans but then losing them like yeah, with yeah. no totally with, like dip and and stuff if that makes yeah. sense no yeah, no it makes sense. that's why well, that's why consistency is important i suppose yep constantly uh, staying relevant and the fan base is growing and then you're growing clothing yeah. sales growing blah 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 speaking of relevancy Callum tips have been <laughs> something that you started as as I guess just a, a little thing on Instagram and have now kind of grown their own cult following in a way and yeah, yeah. I mean that's another thing where I think you've because you've been vocal in the community even if you've had a few weeks off because of an injury or, or whatever you've maintained that <laughs> presence because of stuff like that <laughs> I mean, it, feels, it feels stupid but it's <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah, but it, uh, it's it's it it has gained its own following and people people enjoy reading them people and it, it sparks a debate and i mean sometimes it sparks a furious debate mm -hmm. and other times it's, it's a funny thing but like it's it's mm -hmm. little things like that that you have kind of unintentionally done that have helped build your own like persona so to speak on social media yeah. um and kept kept you relevant and and you obviously recently hit tip 500 which well <laughs> i mean the first what was the first one it was pp pee -pee poopa or something Oh yeah, yeah, because it was um, it was uh, what's it? Uh, it was pee pee poo poo because it was um, April first, April. 4th. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 
but then you then you dropped sort of the the proper one which to be honest like it's a bit longer um, than pee pee poo poo a little bit <laughs> I've, I've always known you were a, a wise sort of well well thought out man but i was i was in, very impressed at the the depth of that and how well written it was it was um it still sounded like callum it was good yeah that was the, yeah, yeah. That's the important part the tone of voice yeah yeah <laughs> but um and i guess that kind of shines a light on on yeah your mentality towards like coaching and the idea that you want to spread knowledge and things which is, is sick to see mm. so um, my question really is this christmas are you going to release a callum tips stocking filler book <laughs> that'll oh, be like amazing little, just to have like you, next to the toilet the, one of the, yeah exactly yeah, one of the toilet next to the yeah, toilet yeah. Books. Um, like that 100 percent do it yeah yeah um, um, toby's should... been trying to like um push me to try and do it i don't know how to go about like trying getting like Still some independent, independent <laughs> publisher or something maybe i'll talk to max about like how he how he did it or whatever but it'll be yeah, so yeah. weird yeah i don't know whether would it just start from like tip one or and then like chronologically go through them all or whatever yeah, a random selection of callum tips yeah. like bits of wisdom oh, bits man. of wisdom while you poo <laughs> something like that one of them are literally one of them is literally uh if you if you've had two poos before midday, you're off to a good start. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's one of them. So. Do you do you write them? I assume you don't just go, oh shit, I need to write a caption, and then you write a calendar tip. Like I'm assuming you've got a little bit of a backlog. And in- <laughs> I, I do, I do have a backlog. I've got like a big, um, really long um, note on my phone, yeah. with like yeah. all of them, pretty much. Um, um, but usually, like if I don't have anything backed up, and I've got like a post already ready for the, from the day of training, then I'll just like come up with something. Oh, so- I've, I've just remembered. This is this is my 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 constant paranoia that I have. Uh, when we uh, just over a year ago when we first started this podcast like coincidentally around that time you also did a callum tip that was like sort of it, it was something and it basically said like about people who listen to other podcasts and then just regurgitate info on their own and oh. something like that and i like sent it to you and i was like is this about me <laughs> i think a lot of people a lot of people have done that they've commented like i feel attacked <laughs> like, yeah <laughs> and, and messaged me like bro like is this about what i did a couple of days ago and i'm like yeah. it, like didn't even know you did it yeah because some are just like that that right level of ambiguity that sets me yeah up. yeah yeah um <laughs> so we should, I we, I mean, that, I we're about to scott, scott has done the same thing as well <laughs> <laughs> we're about yeah. to hit hours so what do you say i'm gonna go to the toilet if that's right all right, all right. i'll talk healing quickly <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've these two. have my darwin mug you're very quiet keelan yeah i know it's, listening as always yeah it's different when when there's a camera because then i'll be listening and then i look up and i see myself listening and it's not nice <laughs> With the broccoli. At it. Yeah. No, it's a bit it's a bit mental. If anyone's not yeah. watching this, uh Keelan's hair is probably it, it, I feel like it's the biggest it's ever been. Probably. Probably. Really big. Yeah, it is really big. Have but... you not cut it since we shaved it for Soul Destroyer? No. Nope. No, I haven't. Wow. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I've no plans. Can you straighten it? Someone because told me to. I'd do it, it for a lot. Really long, I reckon. Yeah, it is. After a shower, it's like shoulder length nearly. Surely your mum has strainers. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, please do it. it. For the next podcast, next video podcast, we'll have you with straight hair. (laughs) Oh, it would be funny. It would be funny. I'll just wait for Callum to evacuate his bladder. But um, I hope you are enjoying this. Here he is. He's back. I'm enjoying this greatly. It's nice to catch up. I'm liking the, the video gives us a little sense of actually being able to see people. Oh, you don't want to see this ugly mug. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I was going to say before you just went is we're we're nearing two hours, so we should try and wrap this up soon. But I, I mean, I say I've heard a whisper. I know it's happening, but I'm curious now in what shape and form. Uh, and and there was a Twitter leak as well. To anyone who doesn't follow Star on Twitter, they occasionally leak an image or a, a tweet that lets <laughs> people lets people know of information that is uh, not necessarily public yet the the 10 year documentary as you approach your your 10 year anniversary mm. i've heard in the works yeah 
Um, I'm not sure how much I can. Uh, no, I'm assuming, it, to be fair. But I, I, I'm assuming the coronavirus is potentially affecting that or the mm -hmm. plans for that pretty substantially. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. Uh, we've got like, we did this first round of interviews with um, yep. Richard Faraday. Um, and I'm not sure how much longer he's staying in the US, but yeah, we, we, the second round of interviews have already been. Um, already been postponed. underway kind of thing but yes has been, has oh, okay. been had to have been postponed um yeah, yeah toby's like delegating um to, oh, so much of the pressure is on toby um yeah but he's been like delegating like tasks for us and stuff um well because it's still meant to be um so we've got like six months to go until 10th yeah. of the 10th which is ideally meant to be the premiere date yeah naturally but, should yeah. be whether we're allowed out of the house by then, we'll see. But um, I'm assuming there's that tasks probably include a lot of arch like digging through archives of yeah. old footage. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that would be quite. I'm I'm really curious to see like what direction it's going to take or what angle it's going to take. But I'm mm. that that's mm. a story to tell and the amount of shit as well. I think it's going to be a. I think for, for us as outsiders, it would be amazing to watch, but also for you guys, it's like a reflective thing would be fucking amazing because Toby yeah. will kill it. As well, like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That would be very, very cool. Mm. I think it's, um, I think it's going to be huge. It's yeah. Be exciting. Yeah. And so the other thing was there was obviously kind of uh, a driving goal to get to 10 million subs by 10, 10, 10, which sort of, unless you, what near doubled your current subscriber rate looks hard yeah no that's not happening is it <laughs> <laughs> but no. i i think i think the the rate you grew and the rate you're at at the moment and the rate you continue to grow is yeah. still fucking outstanding you can, so you can be very happy with that for yeah. sure mm. you can beat yourself up so incredible stuff the only other thing on the list really is to talk about music but i don't even know how we go into that aside from the fact that you just have one of the most eclectic music tastes of anyone in parkour i reckon <laughs> you reckon I oh, yeah. Like that. yeah i remember so, when we drove to denmark together and you had that fucking playlist that was just years ago as well and mammoth like mammoth playlist filled with like 15 minute long songs of of oh fuck i can't even remember the names yeah i remember we had a transatlantic all of the above which is like 25 minutes long or something yeah. that was and nice incredible stuff that i kind of would never like dig out on my own but i'd love to listen to mm -hmm. but i don't even know where to like there's nowhere really to start i think is there i mean i assume you have a spotify yes i have you have a playlist, um, that, like, a playlist that people can listen to and things because yeah i have i have a bunch um callum stara is my account name and i have a metal playlist called um Uh, it's called the be all end all metal playlist it's like uh 400 songs or something the ultimate parkour playlist uh, which already has like a few followers and i don't know how um, it's, 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 it's like uh 340 old school hip-hop songs or whatever oh, okay. you just um, said a few followers, so i'm gonna guess that's a substantial number i'm gonna go and look that up no not not that much like i, oh, I mean like 40 followers but like oh, okay. uh, I guess that's just from people searching parkour. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, just like some jazz and stuff as well. You have baseline bangers. <laughs> oh yeah, that's inspired by Ed. <laughs> yeah, there's not much from baseline bangers. Oh, I have um, the prog rock playlist, which um, like you know, it tells you how much time there is. Like there's like sixty songs or something on there, but it's oh, like, God. but. Um, because prog rock has uh, very long songs there's like yeah. several several that are like like half an hour to 50 minutes long or something so that the, it's like 30 hours in co compared to <laughs> 30 hours of music compared to what, like hip-hop playlists or something yeah what would you say is your like over overarching favorite genre um probably metal but metal is still very um yeah very broad like because i like I, would, I like the nerdy nerdy music and yeah. um, metal is like a vehicle which can take you anywhere pretty much well, in terms of, hmm? 
Yes, is it Tesseract? Tesseract? Tesseract. Um, I'm more into Between the Buried and Me, I guess. Well, between the Buried and Me, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But Tesseract are good too. But but yeah, like, um, yeah, it's a vehicle where you can just make whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. That you're not restricted to any tempo or whatever. <laughs> Or, or any even any um like instrumentation as you know i guess yeah yeah no, of course um amazing well we should probably leave it at that because yeah. anyway how are you guys to... doing i'm banging yeah i'm literally just editing all day <laughs> oh yeah when's when's that looking to come out are, are you have you ditched um the idea of filming new stuff for it yeah yeah, yeah. we've we've yeah. Stopped, we stopped filming after europe because that's when everything started to get locked yeah. down um Absolutely. it's so, the main so. video is like approaching within a couple of weeks it'll probably be pretty much there and then i've got to do behind the scenes which won't actually take that long uh, and then we've got a few other things um so I, I i'm aiming for like end of may there's a few other things to sort out like clothing stuff and stuff but nice. that'll, that'll be the hope um so but me, yeah send me some of the new, the new the new bits when they come out yeah i will do of course don't worry if if we can actually send stuff no, we can send stuff that's all right yeah um i'll just sanitize it down yeah yeah washing your vegetables and stuff the i can't remember what i was gonna say but i think i think i've enjoyed this hopefully you've enjoyed this listeners and viewers and if you're not already following callum then i don't know how you found this podcast because if you're listening to this and you're not following Stora, then <laughs> something's gone very wrong <laughs> but uh are you got you got anything you want to say anything you want to plug callum um not that i can think of really nothing, uh, nothing that springs to mind immediately if people want to read tip 500 because they're because they're a parkour nerd and want to kind of take their training a bit more even take their training further or just like a bit more seriously with some structure or whatever I, that's probably, probably a good read even if you want a bit of a laugh it just gave me a bit of a drive i think when i read it like mm -hmm. Mm. i didn't necessarily think shit i need to implement all of this stuff but i was like oh i need yeah. to actually try it. so well, i mean writing it like revealed like loads of um like insecurities in my own training of course like i'm mm. yeah yeah but yeah, yeah. It did the same for me like <laughs> sick sick, sick. Mm. well thank you very much for thank you. coming on i'm glad we finally got to do this yeah same my pleasure. normally we would record a secondary outro after the guest is gone, but because we're filming this, it's going to be awkward. So we'll just, we'll just end it like <laughs> this, I guess. But um, yeah, uh, I mean, obviously you've checked out Stora, but I mean, check out what, check out Stora. No, hmm. you, you've checked out Stora, check out Motus. If you haven't already, we'd appreciate that. TMP podcast. If you want 10% off the store, if you enjoy this podcast and want to listen to others, then just there's, there's links and ever episodes. The Phil Doyle one has been, incredibly well received and is an amazing listen um and yeah we appreciate your support and and also hope you're all safe and well in these very strange times 